It's uh, a little after 7 p.m. and December 5th, 2018, and I'm calling the Board of Health meeting to order. So first, uh, we have a couple of appointments on the agenda and then other business, quite a number of other items of business this evening. But before that, I'd like to announce any items to be added as not reasonably anticipated by the chair. 48 hours in advance of the meeting, and then we can vote whether we want to amend the agenda with these items. So we have... The wrong permit renewals. Okay, so we have one disposal works installer permit, and three food establishment permit renewals, and one catering permit renewal. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add? Okay. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to add these items to the agenda. So moved. Zach. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, how about we take care of those because? Um, well, there's a whole there's bunch a whole of permit lot. renewals down under. Do you want to do all of those together? You know? Yeah, maybe. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. Because yep. I think Sounds it'd be good, good to have the agent here for a lot of the discussions that we can't really do without. Yeah, anyway, so um, there is the very first one listed under other business that is a 2018 renewal um, new what? permit for Rodenheiser. They oh, okay. typically he wants to start the work, <coughs> and in order to they expire December 31st, so he paid so that he can get oh. one to start right away. Yeah, and then he also submitted his renewal for 2019. Oh, okay. So there is one 2018. Hmm. Yeah, good. I guess okay. it's worth it to get it in. Things aren't frozen yet. So. His, his choice. Okay. Uh, well, let's do that one separately since it doesn't yeah. fit in. So um, we have a motion to renew the disposal works permit for 2018 for Rodenheiser. I mean, if, can I just ask a general question? Yeah. If you had any complaints or concerns, would you, are you going to just tell us now or is oh, yeah. everybody? No, these. Everybody meets all the criteria. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the only thing is it would be conditional to the pre-construction conference. So moved. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Yes. That's a so, 2018. Okay, so just yeah. so uh, I uh, Daryl. just Daryl. Re yeah. reiterate that. So um, all of the others, I, I don't need to ask you. We'll just go ahead. They've all cleared. They all are in good standing. And since a lot of them are, are a lot of them renewals? Anybody new? Everybody. They're all. Everything that has come in is a it's renewal. renewal. So okay. Far. All right. So. Um, can we group any? You can probably group the disposal Step. works. Okay. Disposal work. So, so one, it's two, three, four, one five, through seven. Six, seven. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we do them together and the rest are. All right. So can we have a motion to approve the 2019 disposal works installer permits for Rao, Rodenheiser, Scott Septic, Whalen Excavating, DP and Sons, and F.P. King excavating. And then so we also have Trask in there. Uh, no, I did. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Ben Stevens of Trask. So moved. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you sign all these. Oops, we missed WW Contracting of Upton. So we'll add that. Where is that? Uh, that was our added. This morning, oh. today, rather. So, uh, so you're approving that one as well, right? Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's all of these for signature. Behind someone, while I'm signing, pick out. I can't read and sign at the same time. What do you want? Do you want me to uh, read out? Pick out who we're going to vote on next. Make a motion. Why don't we group together food establishment permit renewals for Heritage of Sherborne and then the Heritage Coffee, Wine, and Provision? 
um, you just want, you might have to vote those separately because the of the sodium. Oh. Um, but they're the exact the, same. Right, but you're saying don't clump them with the, sweet meadow feed and grain. Yeah. yeah. And oh, okay. And sherbet wine and the spirits. The ones with... <laughs> no, 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 I was doing yeah. the top two. Yep. Oh, okay. So we can do heritage and heritage coffee. They're, they're the oh. same sodium level. Okay. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the renewals for the heritage of Sherborne for Condi and provision shop? Conditional, Conditional to, posting, to posting of the sodium. Conditional to posting of the sodium. So level. moved. Second. Okay. All, All in, in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's see now you Back just have more to sign. <laughs> Basically I'll never catch him. Uh, do I have a motion to renew the 2019 food establishment permit for Sherburn Wine and Spirits conditional to the sodium posting? So moved. Say. I don't, can't write this. All list. those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, you only have to give me a minute to write. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and they have the heritage of that separate catering one at the top, too. We yep. didn't do that yet. So the, all the food establishments, <coughs> you do not sign those. Okay. And I think we still need to, uh, can I give another motion? Yep. Uh, do I have a motion to renew the food establishment permit for a sweet meadow feed and grain? Yeah. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And so I think we just have the catering permit left. The, uh, to and the two nicotine. And the two nicotine. Yeah. <laughs> I've been checking them off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got to roll, Matt. Uh, I just want to make sure Ellen doesn't yeah. punch me. Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. She's got fire in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling good tonight. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, do I have a motion to renew the catering permit for Heritage of Sherburn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And even though it's, but they don't have the sodium condition because it's a catering yeah, establishment. It's a catering. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do I have a motion to renew the tobacco and nicotine delivery product sales permit? for Sherburn Fuel LLC and Royal Bangor Corp doing business as Sherburn Wine and Spirits. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Adam those you that. sign, Daryl, so you do a minute. Okay. <laughs> that one. It's like speed meeting. And this one. Effectively, without Mark here. Um, we probably need Mark for the. We can't do the two that are scheduled. And we can't do oh. the lockup facility without Mark. We could talk about the MAHB and MHOA conferences. Okay. That's this, right? One of the yeah, that's one of them. Well, do you want to talk about MAHB or do you want me to talk about MHOA? Do MHOA while okay. you're. So um, fresh. <laughs> it was it was good. It was very good. Um, a lot of people there. Talked to a lot of different people. Um, the classes were very good. I was limited to the emergency preparedness, so there were a couple things that I had already seen. One class I had already been to because I gave it at the regional meeting, but it's good to see it again. Um, another one on um, Medical Reserve Corps will retain, to retain and recruit new members was very interesting because they said you should hire personnel to work full time on that. <laughs> so it was more geared toward much larger towns or cities. So that I didn't get too much out of that, but I went to 
the George Hugh Felder um, class, which was very interesting. And there were some other classes that were good, but it was very good. Hmm. It was busy. Okay. And M M A H B. Am I the only one? I think. Uh, did Rebecca go? Yeah, Rebecca went to the different session. Yeah, so I went, went to Marlboro. So did, did David? Did you go? I was no. sick. Oh, you were sick. Yeah. Uh, I actually thought that the. Um, presentations were great. It's unfortunately smaller groups, I think. I don't know what the funding is like and people's availability, but the folks who were there were amazing and the discussions were really high level, which was nice and got at very practical matters and the difficult things of figuring out what to do about um, opioids, hmm. which I have to say the more yeah. I learn, I keep thinking of things you've said yeah. and it's uh, really disturbing in Massachusetts yeah. is in a really bad way yeah. mm -hmm. relative to the rest of the country. So, and that surprised me. Um, and uh, I <laughs> bumped into Lisa on the street while I was talking to neighbors all about oh, yeah. the rat <laughs> presentation that I went to. So. Validated. <laughs> so um, that at first I thought, I don't know, I, the other two I kind of knew about, so I went to that, and it was fascinating to learn about how many um, predators die as a result of eating animals who are poisoned. Oh, interesting. Uh, so when they, I guess, collect the animals and bring them to the various Tufts or UMass or whoever does the analysis of the animals, it's a really astounding percentages of owls and foxes and that sort of thing who end up dying from eating these. So. This person was showing other methods of taking care of it, but then uh, I had been thinking as I was listening to him about um, the interest that was expressed in town when the, when the wildlife biologist from the state came and spoke about deer and controlling deer populations <coughs> and people were concerned about Lyme, but then really mice and whatever, I don't know, voles or anything else carry them, but they're big carriers of ticks and maybe rats isn't such a problem it was for the person from Somerville who was there, but. Um, lots of mice yeah. in town. Yeah, lots of mice, and there are rats in town. Yeah, People talk about them in their I barns see. and whatever, yeah. but um, it was interesting to think about it from not killing off the predators. If people could switch to other methods, more mechanical methods and what have you then and uh, poisons here. because <laughs> otherwise the owls could be out there eating a mouse a day versus mm -hmm. you kill off a mouse and they regenerate so fast and they develop resistance to these things so they're always upping the toxicity of the poison so that just keeps going but you keep losing all the predators so anyway and then you're only getting stuff right around your house not in general so um so that was good and what other so something else was really great I've just been thinking about, you know, like there's integrated pest management strategies that rely more on either organic or mm -hmm. mechanical um, types of approaches. I mean, I think that would be something if we could get a speaker that a lot of people in town, because it's not just pest management, I would extend it to also like lawn care, you know, plant mm -hmm. care, those two things about, you know, there's ways to reduce the amount of chemicals that are going into the environment, mm -hmm. and here here are some strategies that can really work, and and you know not damage the <coughs> ecosystem. Right. So I think that would be and a damage great your other pets and that sort of right. thing. So it's uh, I think that'd be a really good topic, and I think people would mm -hmm. be interested in it. Is that is, do we have a person we can contact, or is that something that we uh, can we had some people come in years ago? The Groundwater Protection Committee had brought in speakers on that topic. I don't know that they're around anymore, but there are I'm sure definitely organizations. Lots there's a lot yeah. more than there was yeah. then. So um, so we could probably find somebody through, yeah. even through NOFA or through some other organizations. Beyond Pesticides is another one. Yeah. So, Because um, be actually I think the town started on its path because there was a a uh, tree specialist who said that, and not called tree specialists, I think that's also a company, but um, an arborist mm -hmm. who 
said he started out using pesticides, but he noticed when they, the people who had the best trees, wherever they would go, were the people who did not have perfectly homogeneous uh, lawn. <laughs> and then he started putting it together that people who weren't using all that stuff, you know, everything was pretty robust. So, and then he just went off in other directions on that. But uh, in any case, so we could have, um, yeah, you know, put together something. Maybe the spring would be more yeah. enticing. Yeah, people are really so, thinking about that. Pre spring, so they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. but, um, another one was a presentation on uh, PFAS, and it was by someone who's doing a lot of research on that. And her name is familiar because I've been attending some webinars. Was she part of some group? Spray? No, she was from a university. Oh, I'm not good with names. In any case, so that was an excellent presentation. <coughs> Just amazing. Um, and then the last discussion was on, oh, just what Boards of Health might be facing in terms of uh, marijuana regulations and what we do and do not have to control. And that uh, one thing is that for edibles, we don't have to worry about food permits because they're covering that mm. elsewhere. Because I think they're treating it more like uh, medicinal or FDA something. Oh, so, so that, it's like, that like will be out of our hands. Pharmacies and like compounding pharmacies. It, oh, yeah. interesting. Something. It hasn't all been worked out. It's the so basic <laughs> message of the meeting is that every time we'd hit like exactly how's that going to work, that wasn't all cleared up yet. But uh, there are a few things that we won't have to address um, just yet. So, uh, okay. And what's that? So, so is this something, this research, something that we should somehow consider or, you know, maybe talk to Scott or, I, I don't know, it just seems like this is pretty compelling data and um, something. Well, I still think it has to, the other pieces were that they, they say somewhere in there that they need to do more studying before DEP will approve it. So I don't right. know Maybe if we have to. Where they are. You know, I'm, I'm oh, just kind of okay. curious where MassDEP is relative to this because it said, you know, they started doing pilot testing in 2015 and then there's a couple examples of that in, in this, but they certainly weren't, they weren't three year studies. So I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, does DEP have other data and other studies that would be useful? And what do they think the time frame is? Because you I know, got Connecticut's the, allowing it already. Yeah, I got the impression that DEP wasn't ready yet, but Mark attended this, right? Yes. And took a lot of notes. So okay, so we can him. ask Mark. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd just be curious to hear, like, where are they in the timeline on this? Yeah. Because I mean, I'm. I still have my concerns that, again, it's another yet another nitrogen-focused strategy. Although Wait, they, they say they, that they it does address emerging. Yep. Yeah. So, and I'd like to see the data. Many, yeah. 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 Um, and which things doesn't it handle well? So, anyway. Um, or could there be another layer of something? And then it is that long-term issue. How durable is something? But you know, maybe a biomat forms and something else evolves, and it you know it doesn't just degrade and then become ineffective. So, yeah. might be possible. possible. So. Intriguing. Um, okay. Should we do the budget? Oh yeah. I don't know if we can do the budget in three minutes. Oh, actually, no, we, we don't have it. Oh, we have until 40. Oh, OK. Um, we won't go into the deep details on the budget, but maybe we could just talk about. OK. <coughs> I talk about yeah, clerk even, issue. And even um, what I provided will likely be changed because um, Sharon sent the forms she sent me include um, let's 
see. You're talking about for this the, material, for the, Ellen, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I've worked up, but that's that will need to be changed anyway because the forms they provided for the salaries mm -hmm. they made errors on okay. they when they carried over from the pre fiscal year 19 onto the fisc onto the form there's this form which I don't I may not have provided I don't think to I you. saw that but this this is the fiscal year 19 the current figures and they put fiscal year 18 figures in and then they adjusted so so, yes yeah, so they she's she's got to adjust that I've got to work with um, Deb Seifring in the accounting office and she'll fix the form so figures are going to change anyway so this is that affects this summary as well but does it affect like other that, what's this? Yeah, this that, is, no, this that's is all the departments, and, and this number matches this number, so I presume yeah. there's an error just carrying yeah. all the way through. No, no, no. It's that number is correct, oh. but they didn't put it on this form. They don't have oh. the adjust. That's this year's, and what they're saying should be fiscal year 20, I believe. Is that right? This has 19 and 20. That's, that's my form. That's my form. But it matches what's in this. Yeah, which is wrong. So I have that has to get corrected. The, the figures they provided so, so your question are is, wrong. Is this right or is this no. wrong? It'll be, that'll have to be corrected. It's wrong because of the same underlying error that was here. Right. So this was wrong, so yours is wrong. Right. Okay. So it has yeah. to be. <laughs> I was like, they do match. So <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. so it, they either have to yeah, both be right or both be wrong. What they gave is when they uh, put it onto the form. They put last year's. They put the previous year, and then it messes everything up. Right, because so what we've tried to do recently, certainly a goal <clears> of the town is always to save money or not spend more money. So we've been trying to hold the budget steady, except for the cost of living increases adjustments so that's the cola um, and then you just apply a straight percentage to that and that's something that bumps it up so that's despite the fact that we always have something new coming new and responsibilities and even things to do other than the cola the expense line will have to increase because the visiting nurses yeah. she I contacted her and asked what do you think the contract will be for next year that this is our first year with Walpole agency, visiting yeah. nurses and then come to find out Walpole is merging with Natick now I read it in the newspaper oh. last week oh. so but um, she said they're giving the nurses 2% so the budget will go up 2% she said and so Which that makes sense because it's all personnel. Yeah. That's a contractual nurses line, yes. line item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I increased that. You did. Yeah, you said because 2%. of that conversation, and also Kim Morrow, mm -hmm. the animal inspector. Right. So, the recommendation you provided the backup for to switch the administrative assistant position to. 16 hours versus the 12 and yeah um, I'm sorry clerk to change to the uh, clerk to an administrative yeah. that number isn't reflected right. in here as of no. yet so right. what do we need to do to s support that or help facilitate so Ellen and I met and uh, went over all the things that Jean does and looked at the job descriptions and Ellen had one edit and then we added a few more things uh, to illustrate what she really is doing which is a lot more than what a clerk's position is and also there are guidelines in the town yeah, that, that describe different yeah. levels and so what she's doing fits in and is consistent with other administrative assistants so really I view this as correcting a long-standing error mm -hmm. in terms of how her job has been categorized um, oh, so I guess what I'd like to find out are two things. Is uh, the next step after this would be to go to personnel board and say this is a change that we want to see. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, new 
job description. Categorization. And then uh, more hours. And so the new job description has a higher pay rate. So, um, which is well worth it. She's, you know, she knows the Board of Health. She's careful. She's responsible. She's, you know, does a great job for us. So, um, reliable, polite, all the, all the good things. Um, so the next step would be for the board to approve that concept of asking for that and then uh, go to the personnel board and make a presentation and see if they will uh, accept it. And then after that would be advisory when we present the budget to just explain why it's going to be a little bit more. So, so are you going to put this up for to approve or uh, that Yeah, I can. So. Um, I mean, I think so it makes a lot of sense. I reviewed yeah. the material. It seems That's appropriate. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I don't think it's controversial to us. I would hope not. Because <laughs> it... Right. She's yeah. not being... Um, she just doesn't have the right job description right now and hasn't for a long <coughs> time. So, um, long overdue. Anyway. Uh, all right. So do we have a motion to adjust the uh, clerk's position to be an administrative assistant. So moved. Second. Second. Any other discussion? And, and what about to increase the number of hours? Is that a separate motion? Oh, yeah. And to increase um, four hours a week to make it 16 hours versus 12. Should we do that all in one or? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. And to increase it. To 16. So moved. So. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good luck. And then, uh, does anyone want to go to the personnel <laughs> board? They had That's a fun. meeting today, so I don't know when the next one is. Oh, you got. I'm just going to tap somebody's shoulder. <laughs> I just said newsies, and he's not paying attention, yeah. so I think I have a candidate. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you so much. What did I volunteer for? Going <laughs> no. to the personnel board? Well, sure. I can, I can do that. Okay. Thank you. Somebody will right. have to tell me what to say. Yeah. We can chat. Yeah. We'll go meet Ellen someday. When is it? You should go together. I don't know when it is going to be. The two of you should go together. Well, that's a possibility. Three of us could go. We could see Matt. <laughs> but that would be a quorum. <laughs> Can't have three. Can only have two. <laughs> we could post it. Anyway. All right. Happy so, to help us. Okay, you. great. Thank you. Uh, five minutes. Oh, Mark, we've needed you for so many things. Let's see. Lock up. Try to put the thinking like, cap on. I feel on. like we can do lock up quick. Yeah, there's, there's not much. You, all you got to do is <clears throat> yeah, do acknowledge it pretty much. And do we have any oversight? For correcting this, no. or we just need to be aware. You just need to be aware. And we don't oh. directly with the state. The state, okay. I have to say, the one thing I wondered about when they were talking about the rust in the toilet, maybe they've never lived in a town with well water that's very hard, <laughs> and for a facility that probably doesn't get used a lot, I think that's not a health issue at all. It's just Aesthetic. iron deposits. Yeah. 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 So that one, I have to say, I didn't agree. Yeah. Because if you leave a house out here unused for a while, that's what happens. The solution is to flush the toilet every once in a while, yeah, basically. Or lock up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the message <laughs> we want to send. That is a solution. Yeah. It is a solution. solution. Do you think we can do the 24-7 contact list in three minutes? Yeah. Yeah, you think? So it looks like we need two people. Yeah. Are you I'm, one of them? I'm, I'm already one. I'm the only And yeah. actually, Ellen came up with the perfect solution, which I think, I think they can just do. You can just do. But anyway, go ahead. Cloning. But what, what, what are we talking about? The, so the dispatch. I, oh. oh, OK. So currently, right now, the region requires. I'm on it. Daryl is on it. Um, okay. Police dispatch. The fire. Uh, the police chief. 
and the town administrator. And I just provide your all the contact information. Well, now they're apparent. They they haven't given us any formal reasoning for why, but apparently they're changing it, and it's only going to be two people. That is the 24/7, and. Everyone who, both people need to be on the HAN, which is the Health and Homeland Alert Network. Um, they need to register for this new notification system, the MRPC notification system called Send Word Now, which I haven't registered for yet, because it's really the last thing I want to do. Um, and you have, they will have to be on the Department of Public Health, the Web EOC. Now, the PAN has four drills that you have to do every year. This new MRPC notification system, it, in this frequently asked questions, it says there'll be two a year. And the uh, Department of Public Health Web EOC has two drills a year. Um, so I do them already. And my thought was police dispatch should be the second, um, because there's somebody always there. You know, they will answer the phone if you call. But it's different personnel at different times of the day, and the personnel, I am sure, will not register for all of these three things. They may be on the hunt. I believe the police chief is on the hunt and the fire chief. Um, but I'm not sure if they will register for these others and do the drills that they want. Um, but police dispatch makes sense to me. Right, because so, at least they can go down calling people and they would if folks know, aren't available. They would it know appropriate. everyone's contact information. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but it's... I think we just, I mean, other people can chime in. I've had the chance to go over this before. But I think we just go ahead with that because it's what works. For our town, for yeah. a small town, it yeah. doesn't I did, make sense. I did write sense. to the um, regional coordinator, and I tried to explain that, you know, Sherburn doesn't have <laughs> a whole lot of people that could do Resources, this. There's not, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, I suggested police dispatch, and they kind of rushed it. They answered it saying, oh, yes, your suggestion is fine, but we think it should be this. I would focus on the first part of their yeah. response. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think, too. Okay. All right. Said okay, so and put. we can invite them in and debate it with them. <laughs> what the practical approach is. Mm. Okay. And if the police chief is getting that training, then the dispatcher has the police chief as right. a resource to help the resolve things, right? So seems most efficient yes. so okay it it seems that way to me i don't know what they will okay. say okay okay so 740 so mark yes. uh, can you fill us in on um, we're going to be talking about the use of composting toilets for events at the um, Silverwood Farm on Western Ave. So I need to recuse myself because oh, I'm in a bar. Correct. Okay. Bye. Oh, good thing okay. you came. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Just make it up, right? So I see the engineer here as well, and the mics are high. Uh, you getting Can some feedback can? back there? Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's, I don't need the other mic if you... Can, we turn, can you turn it off? I can't I turn it, it off. I got it, I got it. I can handle it. So, the proposal for the property at 195 Western Ave was uh, brought in with uh, Clivus. It's the name of a company that makes composters. They're not really, they're composting the toilet waste. That's the black waste, we call it. Uh, the gray water was in question on where the sink water would go, the hand washing. We know the engineer provided information there will be hand washing and liquid waste produced from it. And in speaking with the state, 
uh, the only way to get rid of that waste when you use a composter is through a, a field. Um, and it's a gray water field. So that meets all Title V requirements. So that's the discussion I had with Jonathan, the owner who's here as well. And so the composting, the Clivus composting units are allowed for new construction, but the issue becomes the liquid waste. Okay, so I thought that, but I haven't read it in a very long time, and I think I even read just a draft version, that for the composting toilets, uh, gray water, they were looking at something like a 50% of the field area, as long as you could demonstrate if you needed to, you could achieve the 100% for a conventional system? Yeah, we Is that back, still the case? Well, or we look back at 20, was it 24 Maple Street? Or somewhere on Maple Street, there was a, a Clivus, 18, thank you, Paul, a Clivus unit. And there is a reduction. Uh, I don't have the file right with me. I should have mm -hmm. grabbed it. But that is considered because of the fact you're reducing the, the black water. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the process when you're designing for uh, compost, uh, composters. Uh, the issue over at 18 Maple was it was residential. So, but Paul did put information on the expected waste from the hand sinks, and there will be limited washing on site for any utensils and dishware. But the question that uh, the state would ask, um, ask that I ask the client would be is are there any needs for wear washing on site and it's been explained that there isn't they plan to take everything that they bring out to the uh, commissary or wherever the food establishment the, may the be. caterer will yes, that's the way they plan to do it so d for the composting toilets can't you I mean I've seen some like outhouse type toilets or you know porta potties yeah. with just the sanitation, um, you know the gel. The gel. So is that something yeah. that can't be wouldn't be allowed for the food service side of it? Oh, okay. Doesn't kill norovirus either. Oh, okay. So it's okay for just like, you know. It's okay for outside trails. Yeah. And so okay, forth. field yeah. use and that kind of stuff, but not for people who might be serving food. Correct. Yeah. I see. Or maybe even eating the food. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Any questions? So. Do we get the same? Yes. And I'm going to you now. I just want to get the background on the technology because we have been talking about this a bunch. So. Um, I don't know if you got the list of already in place sites that use this. First of all, it's not just a list of all. For state facilities. <coughs> there are public golf courses that use these. And several of them have hand washing. You'll see by the, the data, the hand washers are super low flush. They're a half a gallon a minute. They're typically time to run about 10 seconds. So it takes six hand washings to get a gallon of water. Um, and, the, and the discharge from that can be either run through the composter and then collect it, or it can be run directly to the whole the, the way these things are designed, uh, they're maintained by flavors, but uh, so they come out every three months or every six months. A pile, if you will, in the composter toilet has to be kept moist. So what happens is when they come out, there's, there's sensors in the sensors in the composters, they can either have automatic uh, spray nozzles that add fresh water to them, or they can take the water from the whole tank and pump that back on it to the pot. So basically, what you're getting in this holding tank is water that goes through the compost and piled in the tank and then pumped out. And again, under, um, just wanted to point out number 15.389, compost is approved for general use. For the following conditions. Um, A2, which is uh, A first says there's no liquid discharge from the composting toilet. If the toilet produces a liquid byproduct that is not recycled through the toilet, the liquid byproduct is either A, discharged from the spray water system, or B, and 
for the operative word is or, be removed by a license hall. And that's in the case of most of the facilities that Clavis gave us as references, most of them are zero discharge. In fact, all of these are zero discharge. Some have hand washing sinks, others, others just have the um, sanitizers in the bottom. And the proposal here is that it's going to be catered, but the caterer is going to bring in everything. But what uh, Jonathan proposes to do is build an area that would include refrigerators and freezers and, and a top to work on them. But all the utensils, the silverware would be brought in, used, and then taken out by the caterer. There would be no washing of any kind. The, the only waste generated would be in the bathrooms. And that's what the compost is going to do. So as I feel, and Cletus feels, and all of these, the federal or state and municipal facilities have all been approved by DEP. The ones that are private are golf courses approved by the and again, it's the liquid waste. And the liquid waste, if it goes into a tight tank, that discussion occurred as well with Claire Golden. You need a permit, and it's not allowed for new construction. And as she noted, and I can send this to her, uh, she said that important items are the fact that hand washing is promoted in food service. This isn't on a golf course. This is at a food service facility. So with that said, we don't want to minimize the use of hand washing sinks for both the help that work in the food service side of it and the patrons. So uh, the so use of a tight tank wouldn't be allowed and even if Clivus is being used as a tight tank, wouldn't be allowed for new construction. There's, there's, there's no mention in no. I can send it to the state if you wish. It sounds like, well, it sounds like. Tight tank, holding tank there. It can be resolved at the state level. Yeah. But this facility, this permit request doesn't have to go to the state level. It's a, it's a local issue. I wouldn't but recommend it. But I think if the, if the feedback from the agent is totally here what the vendor is saying and what you're saying, if what you're saying is I interpret the guidance from the state differently, it seems like our responsibility is then to have the state resolve that right. as a sort of final body. I wouldn't Especially recommend approval this if, one. You know, to, since you've been talking to Claire Golden and this is uh -huh. the advice that she's been giving you, so then we need you, to ask it maybe. It Are we no, discussed it in general, it. waiting for the meeting? So uh, again, if you wish, I can send it to DEP. If you want to approve it tonight, I wouldn't recommend approval based on a liquid waste issue. Right. It sounds like there's a, a difference between, as Mark said, between a golf course and, right, well, and a food service. So I like the idea of composting toilets. I right. think we should all have composting toilets just think instead of septic a systems. Question so, right. It's our responsibility it's to kind of turn issue. into a period. So it sounds like yeah. you've got a low level of concern that Claire will be concerned of with that just because it's been approved. So it seems like it should hopefully be a non-issue. I think if the state said, yep, that's fine, then I certainly don't see reasons that I would have independent autonomous concerns, but I think that's a piece of there's a question mark we need to resolve. Right, and I don't know if those places that are on your list are, you know, they were trying to correct a problem, and so that was the method you're saying. So if it was pre-existing, it wasn't a you, new facility. You can use a tight tank in certain circumstances, but the state I know they don't like tight tanks. They frown on tight yeah. tanks. The other, if I could point out the difference between a tight tank and this holding tank, tight tank tanks were always water from toilets, from kitchen sinks, from showers. This is not raw water. This is water that's passed through a composting system, which provides a level of treatment. Mm -hmm. It's probably even better than a septic tank. So it's going from the sink into the, the, toilet, composting going into the composting to toilet and then from there it's going into a tank that's pumped out on a periodic basis. Right. Or if necessary, it's, it's pumped back into the compost to Because obviously the, the composting action works best when, the, when it's moist. So they don't want it to dry out. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen composters like at uh, on beach area, Salisbury Beach is one, they actually add 
worms compile to increase the rate of decomposition because they do mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. So again, I think they're great, and if every home in Sherborne could use composting toilets instead of a subsurface <laughs> leachate disposal, I would be thrilled. So the issue is not that. The issue is we can't we can't not follow what DEP says are the rules. So we just want to get that straightened out. Okay, but and again, if I, if I could just repeat, Title V says they are approved for general use exactly the way we were proposing. And, and there's a list here of 20 odd places in Massachusetts that have been approved for that use. Right, but we don't know if they were not new establishments, and if that's one of the criteria that Claire Golden has laid out, then we need to confirm that well, and and give her a chance only, to answer the... Only for repairs. Well, I, would oh, I think we, to yeah. Yeah. I, I, we, I think what we should do yeah. is, I totally get that you don't agree with us. <laughs> okay. I think we don't agree with you, and the best scenario is to have a third party say, yeah. Paul's totally right, and then we'll be done. <laughs> yeah. But I just worry we'll kind of dig in more when... We just have a third party who can answer it. We just need to get it cleared just, up so we I know what the path is. I just want to make sure we're specific, though, ahead. in terms of the questions. So the questions we're asking are the same as the questions you raised, because I wanted to feel like what was asked of the state was fair. And so it sounds like the questions are, um, Mark's concern is that there's a sort of tight tank-like function in that this is a contained system that is then pumped on a periodic basis by the vendor is one concern. And to resolve that this is not either is or is not applicable for the tight tank considerations from the state. Your assertion is you don't believe it is. Mark's concern is that it's functioning like it. That's one question. I think the second piece that the board would say is our goal is not to minimize hand washing. We're big fans of hand washing at food establishments. And so I think whatever the strategies are, you know, what we say in healthcare is like 30 seconds of hand washing is the target for when I'm coming out of a patient's room to reduce the risk of spread of norovirus or other pieces. And so I would say minimizing strategies in this application, I would be less enthusiastic about. And so I don't know that there's a specific question there, but that would be the guidance from the board to say the goal shouldn't be how can we do it in 10 seconds, it's how should we get the best hand washing that we'd be comfortable with. But I think that's independent of questions to the state. And isn't the third, is this considered new construction? Or is this, because it's a it's change a in use. use. Right. right. So I, I think just. So this is new construction. And. Okay. So right. do you have. Um, okay. So that part's not that controversial. He's referring you agree to with from okay. Clivus of the uh, sites. Um, did you submit that with your, you showed some pictures of places. Yeah, do you, can you get, can you Could provide, you provide that list so to Mark so to he can discuss yeah. it with Claire we, Golden? We, we, we do have it's it. It's inside okay. this packet. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's, Are there any, we didn't oh, here it is. It's right here. I'm just curious if there's any food service uh, facilities. It, so you know, uh, I don't see any. If those things are typically sent in 10 seconds, but it's a mechanical setting, they can be sent for perfect. a minute and a half. Perfect. Do they have hot water or just cold water? Um, Imagine, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've just noticed that a lot of places when they, it has the automatic, it's freezing yeah, water. It'll and run the water for a while. Right. Get mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, and, okay. So he'll check. And then the other thing I just wanted to ask, so you've been having events, and just to make things smoother for the Board of Health, because some of them have been taking a lot of time because I always feel like we're pedaling backwards to try and figure out what's going on and we're not alerted to events and the health agent food inspector have, haven't always had time to address things. So I don't know what your procedure is, um, whether the folks who are using your facility are doing it on their own or are you giving them guidance that they need to contact the Board of Health and just confirm that the food service folks that they have have passed muster and that kind of thing. So we need some better coordination on that. So the, the two events, I think, the most recent ones that we mentioned, the DSEF um, event, they were both Good time ago before we were aware that we had to come through and get permits, and so those people were told you have to get permits. In one case, I think it was fairly short notice, in the other case, I think the library folks' understanding was that we were way ahead of that, and they were 
that term I think was moved along in much more of that scenario. So that's my understanding. And people told that they've got to come get permits. They're aware of that. You know, as soon as we have an event and when we get a bit of the permitting, that would be what's an important aspect of of that. I think we talked about it with the permit checks. The things you can do, which include getting royal permits from the board of directors. We're all, all okay, so and, and what about the caterer idea we discuss? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't so mind um, having some, there are some things that are easier. I think for the library it was simpler because of how they were already set up and uh, I believe the food inspector was a, able to rely on um, certificates and permits from other towns, is that the case? I don't, sure. I don't know it, exactly, but um, so there are a few things. One would be whether we just look at new systems for permitting for people who might be coming repeat or whether you're going to suggest or limit the list of folks who people can use when they have an event like, or whether it's going to be wide open in which case folks really have to know ahead of time so that they're ready to get everything yes, in yes, no. order. So we will have a checklist, we will have a list of approved vendors for the catering list. In fact, we don't want people using the facility in a way that we're not comfortable with. Um, in some ways, we don't want people doing things that we don't understand what they're doing. So it's all on the same page with that. Um, so turn down board now. Okay, so are any events coming up? Not a time about Okay. Okay. Right, and do we need to know? I think I think and it I would help for, us if we just knew when events guidance. were coming up. Well, but I think like for general guidance, is that thirty days? Is that ninety days? Like I think having some guidance about what's a typical timeline in terms of if we're having things coming I don't before know. the so board. Mark, any guess what you and the food inspector would need for any event? Or yeah, for, or for just event. saying for general guidance to say we'd love well, to. Well, one is that they're licensed and have a. Licensed establishment that they're working with. Right. No, 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 I think that's, timing. That's an so is it, no, six, no, is it 60 I mean, days, 30 days, 15 days? Oh, to review. Say, yeah. To just kind of say this I is. I would expect 30 days to review. And does that seem kind of realistic? Yeah. yeah. The events yeah. we're talking about are weddings, bonuses, bonuses. Okay. okay. We'll get well in advance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so I think the ask from the board would be if we could know about an event as it comes up within 30 days of the event. That way, if whoever is on the other side needs to make some adjustment or get something else or renew a permit that's just about to expire in another town, whatever it is, uh, it won't be a scramble. So, so didn't we talk about though that, so are we basically advising Jonathan to that there's other towns that had that system where the caterer would be approved for like a year instead yep. of a single event yep. so that if you're gonna work with a narrower list, they would apply for a year permit. So it would, it would be more of a just check off that, okay, this person has a year permit. We don't have to go through oh, looks like she's any got a butt. review process. But I haven't yet worked with Beth on that yet. Okay. But that is something that would have to be dealt with. You would have to approve it. It, would, it typically is a part of the regulation review. Okay. So before it becomes actionable. Yeah. Right. So not yet, but stay not tuned. Yet because I think that yeah, will really help. Yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then maybe we'll ask, as we get closer <coughs> on that, we might ask you some questions about, we can do it this way or this way kind of thing. And what would be easier? Um, okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Good. And, and just one last question for the Clivus piece. So it sounds like we have the information to submit to Claire. So do we, like what kind of resolution timeline do we hope to get to kind it's of It's difficult to say because the state's on their own schedule. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a polite way of Yeah. I could ask that they expedite it. We've already talked about it. So. Okay. So maybe if we could try to expedite it or just any nice friendly the holidays coming up, like so I just hate to have it take a month because it's sort of waited a week. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks. So now we have an appointment with the uh, planning board to discuss Article 22, the open space subdivision. And I'll have to apologize, I've had too much 
uh, job work this week to refresh my memory on all of Article 22. So sounds like you were gonna. Yeah. <laughs> You should identify yourself. Right. I'm Will Dunham, 17 Goulding Street, and member of the planning board. I'm here with Marian Neutra, my fellow member. Um, we asked for some time on the agenda tonight because the planning board is taking a second run at its open space subdivision bylaw. You probably remember that, that we brought the bylaw, um, or the, the proposed bylaw, before town meeting in the spring, and some people got up and, and raised concerns with it and we withdrew it in the hopes of addressing those concerns and making a, a better bylaw and one that, that more people could get behind. Um, so tonight I think the goal is to refresh everybody's recollection about what the current subdivision bylaw provides, um, the ways in which we, we would like to change that in the new subdivision bylaw, um, the ways that, that we have already decided to, to change the previous language and then to try to get some feedback from the board um, concerning any other changes that, or, or any other concerns um, that you may have. <coughs> so I think Marion has copies of the, the old Article 22, which is the one that we submitted previously. Thanks. And I think maybe, is she, are you handing out a summary? Yeah, the summary for us. Okay, yep. So starting with the, the current subdivision bylaws, we have um, a bylaw that allows conventional subdivisions by right. Uh, a large property can be divided into you know, one, two, three acre lots depending on zoning and developed that way. The, the problems that we see with that are the problems inherent in suburban sprawl, which is lots of pavement, lots of thirsty lawns, um, fragmented ecosystems, loss of natural open space, groundwater recharge problems, climate control problems. Uh, the, the alternative to that is the current open space subdivision plot, um, bylaw, which is section 4.5. Uh, that was a bylaw that I believe was enacted in the 1990s mm -hmm. and has never been used since then. Um, there are some features of it that we think make it unappealing to developers. First of all, that it requires a special permit rather than allowing development by right. Um, it's, it's designed in such a way as that it, it limits the clustering options. Um, houses cannot be on less than one acre lots, so in a, in a one acre lot zoning area, it really has no effect at all. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's generally sort of not up to current state standards for this type of, of open subdivision um, development plan. So we, we had proposed um, last spring a revised bylaw that it made several important changes. Um, the, the major change, the first change, would be that it would allow open space design, design subdivisions by right rather than by permit, which inherently I think will make it more appealing to developers. Um, it's, it's less less of a approval process for them to go through. The way that, that the new bylaw would work is that it would preserve at least 60 percent of of the land on a, a parcel as open space um, for or farming or forestry land um, it could be um, in separate sections around that that parcel as long as they're connected by um, a green corridor and the percentage of wetland on the the conserved open space couldn't be any less than, or any, any more rather than the percentage on the developed portion of the land. Um, housing would be clustered on the remaining 40% of the parcel. Uh, unlike the current bylaw, it would, um, this one would facilitate flexible design of house placement, lot size, spacing requirements. It doesn't impose any sort of... Um, no size. No, no, no size restrictions for lots or anything like that. <coughs> um, the, the way that th there's two different methods under the current bylaw by which the total number of houses on the developed area could be calculated, um, either the number of conventional house lots that could have been approved on, on the, the land um, if it had been divided uh, in accordance with the, the applicable zoning, or um, a, a sort of confusing method that Marion and I are, were debating in the hallway outside that we're not sure anybody would actually use, um, but uh, that would allow developer to, to sort of calculate the amount of, of 
unbuildable land for wetland protection, um, well protection fields, slopes, and things like that, and then um, calculate how many houses they could fit on the, the remainder of the current zoning bylaws. Um, in terms of frontage, the frontage requirement for the parcel would be the same as would be required um, for a regular building lot in the same zone. The 100 foot setback would apply, um, and as we said before, the, the for the individual house lots, there's no minimum size of lot, unlike the current one acre requirement. Um, there's no frontage requirements with respect to the, the internal subdivision roads. So it, it would allow houses to be clustered as, as neatly and, and closely as the, the developer thought was suitable. Um, those common spaces and common roads would be uh, managed by a homeowners association or condo association. Um, the protected open space would either be managed by the homeowners association or transferred to the, the town for management or to a nonprofit. And current Board of Health regulations would apply to houses developed on in, in that subdivision the same way as they would for any other, other developments. Um, that, that obviously raises some challenges like septic design and so forth. Um, but the, the idea here is to um, give developers better incentives to develop property this way um, and, and give buyers, I think, an, an option to, to buy a different type of house in a, in a different type of neighborhood in town. Um, the, it's sort of a, a more a smaller, more communal neighborhood where kids can walk to each other's houses and there's sort of shared community space for, for gatherings and so forth. And, you know, smaller, smaller houses, smaller lawns, less maintenance, things like that. Um, some of the, we, we, as, as Mary, as I said before, we, we've met with some people already and, and started to think about ways to streamline and simplify and fix the, the previous Article 22. Um, th there are some, some undefined, defined terms in there, which was confusing, I think, to people, obviously. Um, in general, the bylaw, I think, is a little bit too complex, and, and we'd like to try to streamline it and simplify it where we can. Um, one example of that is, is with the, the transfer of development rights from non-contiguous non parcels, which um, previously would have allowed somebody to, to put all the preserved open space on, on one parcel and then developed, um, you know, counted it all as one parcel, put all the open space over here, and developed the rest of it. Um, I think that that's complex, and it, it, it may lead to sort of unforeseen mm -hmm. consequences in terms of, of how, you know, negative, negative development impacts. That, that like an end run on taking a parcel that has a lot of wetlands and still being able to develop well, it. We had a provision in for that. Right. Uh, we said that there can be no more wetlands on the, you know, non-developed parcels on the developed parcels. Right. No That's more right. on the developed No, I'm saying, yeah. Uh, like so road access yeah. or frontage or other right. pieces where you could say, I've got something that is otherwise right. unbuildable yeah. that I'm now putting a different exactly. label to and making another area much more densely buildable. Exactly. Right. It's a neighborhood against neighborhood thing, and which we don't want to do. And transfer of development rights has a lot of that kind of problem anyway. We said it doesn't need to be in this bylaw. Let's just, none of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sitting on the Board of Health, which is all regulations and rules that try to lay something out so things will be clear, it is amazing what folks will come up with mm -hmm. so that you never, right, you never anticipated. So, um, so you know, we, we heard that concern, I think, at town meeting, and, and our hope is to streamline and simplify this so that there, there are fewer provisions like that that may be misused or <coughs> we didn't anticipate. So it seems uh, like kind of for us implications would be what does septic look like when you have clustering of the houses and then what does water source look like because the implications for a bunch of those is you sort of run into the wastewater treatment or the public water supply which then have a lot of different implications which may be good solutions but may affect developers incentives. And I, I also actually have a question about the allowable use of the open space because things like agriculture and horticulture have very different implications in terms of water usage 
versus if you're going to be conserving, you know, just forested lands or using it for passive recreation. Um, so there's a big difference in my mind in the potential repercussions. Yeah, like if you're and also residential plus agriculture. Right, plus things like are people going to be using pesticides or herbicides if, if they were going to be doing farming or agriculture. So I think we, we want to be careful probably about mm -hmm. the, the sort of trickle down, no pun intended, effect of um, permitting some of those types of uses in that space. Are we? Uh, we found a lot of loopholes in this. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what we're going through now. And anything you can think of is mm -hmm. really appreciated. Yeah. Uh, in the idea of buy right, and I don't understand all about that since I hadn't really thought about it until 10 minutes ago or so when you brought it up, but um, can parts of it be buy right, but there still be to catch, like, oops, we didn't mean for it to go in that direction? Can you still have a, it needs approval of another level yeah. built in so that it, maybe it's clearer for a developer to be creative, but you'll catch it to make sure that things don't go awry? But I'm too creative. Yeah, that's right. It still has to, like any subdivision, if I, let's say I don't have the bylaw in front of me, do um, you have a copy? <laughs> um, any subdivision goes through site plan review, whether it's conventional or not. So there's that level of oversight. Uh, it doesn't mean that they have to apply for a special permit, but it does have to go through site plan review. What's not clear in the current bylaw um, is that uh, there are provisions that uh, refer you to the planning board's rules and regulations on subdivisions. And you go into those rules and regulations, and some of them are not clear enough and not limited enough. Um, and one of the concerns of some people, I think rightfully so, was that, uh, you know, the developer could do a lot uh, that uh, under a special permit. That would be from the planning board. He could kind of go beyond what this uh, basic law intends, ask for a special permit to do this or that, and it's up to the planning board. And people were not comfortable with not having a limit, a real limit, on uh, what could be done under this bylaw. And too much planning board discretion, because after Will and I are gone, I mean, who knows? You know? <laughs> I mean, no, seriously, you never know in the right. future. Um, you don't want just to be the discretion of a sort of single small group to say, oh, yeah, that's totally allowed. You'd like the law to provide some bounds. Yeah, clearer bounds, put it yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, it seems like one of the parts, like just like thinking about what the septic design looks like, seems like it introduces a bunch of issues. Because again, it seems like one of the pieces we want to pull into it is not having restrictions in lot size. And so then you could have fairly high density. Do any of the nitrogen loading pieces? I'm trying. I wasn't here for a lot well, of field the, discussion, but I know that was a lot of that yeah, discussion. At the individual, I don't know if you're anticipating or have feedback from developers whether they'd automatically be looking to do combined systems. But if they were doing individual, the state Title V regulations, it's. Uh, four bedrooms on an acre, so you couldn't do more than that. Unless they and use the nitrogen reduction system. Yeah, so then it buys you a little. Yeah, five, but yeah. it, open space projects have been discussed when these situations come up. The main concern is that issue of nitrogen loading in well septic. You have to be very aware of the concerns that can be created. You need enough space to get those distances as well. Right. Or a minimum maker for sure. Or some towns I know have rules against having they call them rat tails. So you have a parcel and then it you know has a little connecting piece going out. And we have a few in town, so we have, we have not a lot. eliminated a lot of that. Parcels. But um, so that is one approach or a combined system and I will say if having this law in place means, let's say it got passed in April, there's no way the Board of Health is ready 
with all of our concerns for the combined systems because mm -hmm. they're just That's not right. that dilution is the way we're supposed to deal with stuff but frankly that is the way septic systems are dealing with it they don't treat everything you don't want to drink what's mm -hmm. coming out of the bottom of a septic we're field totally it's not ready for drinking so we're counting on that distribution so if we put these big systems all in one place, just like we saw with the fields analysis, the stuff that's going to be hit on that. And what, what about yeah, it's there. a lot. So, so that would be a concern because we don't have regs for that yet. And, and what about the setbacks from not the on-property well and yeah. the adjacent wells? If you're going to have some kind of combined system, yeah. you're probably going to want to increase mm -hmm. the setbacks from mm -hmm. the potable supply. So it's right, and then require right. all those analyses. So it's a, it's a multiple piece. Right. Sort so of. the only way I could see doing it sooner, but it'd still be incredibly difficult because it's technically it's just technically hard to figure out, which is probably why the state and lots of states haven't done it for that in between 10,000 gallons a day in a single home. There's so much variability, but so right now under our regs, we can't say no really, um, but whether there'd be a way under no regulatory, but under planning board, whether there'd be a way to say, yeah, you know, I don't want to really give a board of health regulations to another board, but it just gets we would have to get something in place yeah. to be able to regulate those more Because you don't want a bunch carefully. of things you're like, oh, these are all 9,999 gallons exactly. per day. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and sort of that's in a spike, and oh, this development's right next to that development. So they're, they're all just 9,999. Right. No, we get that. Yeah. Um, Actually, uh, what this is designed to approve are not like the really dense multifamily things that you may have in mind. You, you're limiting the number of houses to the number that would ordinarily would, could be on that same parcel, minus wetlands and everything, mm -hmm. um, with conventional subdivisions. So. Uh, and you have 40% of the land to put them on. So most um, pocket neighborhoods are, you know, a, a cluster of three or four houses, maybe five, maybe, maybe more for the more dense ones. But in Sherburne, you wouldn't be able to do them that densely. Oh. But what so I'd worry about is, is if we sort of say there's no parcel, like I don't see that here. Where so is you're that sort in of here? Like the limit. good faith of developers to say, like, I don't see something that says, here's the house counter, here's how dense it can be. It's sort of, here's how big the parcel is, here's how many houses could be on it. You have up to 40% to put it on. But if you say, I've got a rock outcropping here, so I don't have a contiguous 40%, mm -hmm. so I'm putting them on 20%, and I'm using this whole unit as a parcel, there's nothing that really restricts the density within that. It's sort of the assumption that people wouldn't want to build it too dense, but if you say, I can get a lot that's got a divide down the middle of it and that whole thing counts but I've got a 20 foot cleft halfway through it yeah you're right I mean it has to have a hard, hard well, because then they could say I've got I can put more houses on this is a 20 acre parcel yes you know seven acres of it is on one side of a cliff and 13 acres is on the other side but it's a 20 acre parcel because I'm making a parcel here's mm -hmm. how many houses could go on a 20 acre parcel that 20 foot cleft is a very small percentage of that total acreage. Now we're fitting all that on seven acres. Okay, now on the other side, we've got, you know what I mean? It's just like having watched lots of things that you're like, you have found every possible way to squeeze the most possible sewage into the smallest possible area. That's the piece that I worry about and the price point driving down to say people will buy this house because it's much cheaper. But you sort of say if you're the a butter and suddenly you've got all this and there's nothing that has a density footprint. Um, or even, even five systems close together, if you're the one drinking down gradient of that, mm -hmm. you know, you're in trouble. So, and that's not your problem, but that's the problem. Right. We have to be ready to tackle, and we're not ready. What, 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 <laughs> what about so, when you're talking in item four about how to limit the number of houses that could be constructed on one of these parcels? So. First of all, there was two different formulas presented. I would definitely be propone the latter, which mm -hmm. basically subtracts out 
things like wetland protection areas, um, well protection fields. I don't really know what you mean by the well protection field, but maybe as part of that, there could be an incorporation of things like setbacks from drinking water wells or, or something that gets to this density and proximity issue that we want to be mindful of in terms of both the septic discharge and the mm -hmm. potable water use. So something that in here that, that can take it into account that still would make it workable from a financial and developable sort of, mm -hmm. you know, incentive, but be somewhat like taking into account the protections that I think yeah. we're hesitant about. Unfortunately, I have to say where I'm thinking we might want to head though with these kinds of um, potentially either dense or larger systems um, is not to just a straight linear foot setback because we've been hearing from yeah. the hydrogeologists that we've talked and working with that once that groundwater hits the fractures in bedrock it's traveling lightning fast mm -hmm. so we can't rely on just distance because we don't know but unfortunately we don't know what the cracks look like we don't know which cracks connect to where and I think so we're going like, to need can't know. <laughs> so, I mean, right. that's been the and so whether we have to require more treatment before it goes into the ground or other kinds of controls or I'd love to see if people stop using hazardous chemicals in their home but, yeah, guess, but that will never be able to I guess the question is if your goal is to say we want to know what you're worried about. Where the regulations always get that. tricky <laughs> yeah. is we get really big and we say, I want to solve this piece. I want to solve that piece. I want to do this. And so I guess the question for us is, I think, to, I think the core pieces of concern are density is the thing that worries us the most in figuring out how to manage density because a big spike at the edge of your property has implications for the people around you. That get that we've seen get tricky in lots of other situations. And the num and the number. And I think it's the not number, just I, the number. It's right. the I mean the density. Right. Because I think twenty homes and five homes I'd worry about differently. Right. The degree to which mm -hmm. I know the science to base that is limited, but it's just the kind of mm -hmm. if everybody's at peak, what does peak look like? Versus if everybody's at peak and it's four, it's just a different peak that's going to a point site or a small handful of sites. And I think if we imagine that, again, not proposing changes to the regulation, but just to kind of elicit the feedback of the board, like if they were all 1.5 acre lots, for me that would feel not like it's the best open space solution, but in terms of thinking about how I think about density, it sort of feels like if you look at our neighborhoods and say, what's the smallest lots that we have consistent neighborhoods that we feel like are in compliance, it's hard for us to push for a density greater than that. Because if we have a lot of neighborhoods that have 1.5 acre lots, it's hard to say it's got to be two acres per unit for this to be okay for something that's intended to be denser. Right, and one of our residential areas is a one acre right. per lot. So um, already that's a little bit dense yeah. in your book. Is that correct? Was that, I mean, it sort of depends. If like the whole town was but, covered yeah. with homes, I think we'd yeah. be in big trouble yeah. water quality wise. But so because we see it downtown, mm -hmm. and it's not like we have the densest, densest downtown. Yeah. So. There's yeah. a lot of space to either side and all around, and yet mm -hmm. it still shows signs of impact from septic. And so for us, it sounds like we don't have a specific number of this is how many houses <laughs> per acre. I think we'd say it would be hard for us to say that it has to be more than one. Though, if we had a magic wand and could say that, we would say that because we worry if the whole town was that. But it doesn't seem like the pocket neighborhoods are going to turn the whole town that. Mm -hmm. But also being strategic about and really being mindful of how does this touch a butters is the piece I struggle with. Because if you sort of say, I'm this high density rectangle and the person next door is 151 feet from my septic system, if I were, like, that's one of the pieces I don't know how to put it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, we'd have to come up with a way to yeah. right. change the requirements for the edge that of the kind of the septic, housing the to the abutters yeah. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. it were, I mean, it, it does uh -huh. make sense that and it's going to need to be more and we're going to need to be conservative about So that. I don't know how much we have to, I mean, we've known that we have to tackle this at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I and mean, how much more we could specify up front. And 
can this continue to be developed on the side, and then we just have to figure out then what rules do we would, want to overlay would, I, on I would, top I of that? I would want the to do all this work, and then for us to be like, oh, we've decided this, and have that in isolation, and then be like, this just broke <laughs> the last year and a half that you spent working on this, because we came up with a septic regulation that's totally, like I'd want to make sure they intercalate appropriately and support the public health concerns, but also don't take away the important mm -hmm. things that this does too. Yeah. Um, Right now, uh, clustering houses on one acre of a, say, uh, one acre lots on, say, say we have a 20 acre lot. That's kind of, there are a lot of 20 acre lots in Sherburn that could be developed. Um, with a conventional subdivision, a developer could place um, in a two acre zone, let's say, a developer could place uh, 10 houses there. and divide up the lot uh, kind of any way he likes. Every lot could have some wetlands on it or mm -hmm. whatever. In areas where the wetlands are all kind of in one area, which often happens, in any case, the lots it tend to get, you know, it's kind skinnier. of pie-shaped pie or mm -hmm. flag-shaped or weirdly shaped. And you end know. up with that septics that are closer than they should be. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, the question is, uh, we've taken some sample uh, parcels that actually are for sale or mm -hmm. have been up for sale, just to see how would it work here. Yeah. And I think that's the way we have to proceed to vet this. Some of them, it's just not going to work at all. So forget it. You can't do this on that lot. And that may be true with your current regulations. That may be true of most of the parcels, but there may be some that you could you know, by uh, placing septics in strategic locations. I should, there's another um, uh, provision in this, uh, in the bylaw that isn't on this list. That is that you can take 10% of the open space um, and use it just for septics. Hmm. So that expands your area of use, at least for the septics. So that's considered an acceptable use? Yeah. Of only 10%, though, so you can't up to 10% because I don't know that that says that right now. So, Mark, if there were playing fields on a septic, and I'm not suggesting that there'd be that kind of intensive use, but I'm using it as an example, would that be a problem? Like a soccer it, it field on top of a septic? It would be with um, the actual cover of the, the material. Uh, so, if the grass is wearing down due to the use of the field, you could have erosion and septic waste coming to grade. Uh, so the whole consideration would be to have a vegetated area at all times. Would the compaction be a problem? Uh, if they're going to use anything but loam and soils of permeability that we expect them to use, it would be a problem. Um, side areas, they can use clayish material, but they can't do that over a septic system leaching area. So I, when I look at your allowable uses right now, I don't see that provision that you just mm -hmm. mentioned. So is that something you're That's going not to the add? Intent. Okay. The intent is not to have lawns and playing fields. Or no, no, no. I'm saying no, I was just septic. trying to find out if it was shared land. Yeah. What could it take in terms of shared land, just in case? No, I That's was going back to your, you could use up to 10% of the open space for septic. I don't see that as an allowable use right now in the bylaw. Um, it says, it, there's a vague thing that says aquifer protection, but it doesn't say anything about septic. Uh, because that could be. I know that. Let's see. Where I'm just looking at the. It's page. Allowable oh, use. Allowable use. There is a somewhere in here. A, if I can find it. Oh, I didn't see it. I see the five percent. But that's, that's about pavement yeah. and other things. Yeah, so in A, you did say aquifer protection. So, I mean, maybe it needs to be its own item because I think that would be a way that, you know, one could think about coming up with a sort of protective mechanism that if some of that open space, you know, a fraction of it could be used 
to help I with think the septic. I think it's, is it the minimum, there's the minimum percentage of required open space may be reduced by no more than 10 percent, provided the full required minimum space is mapped. And then there's further down it says said land may be utilized for water supply wells and associated infrastructure, subsurface leaching fields, and other underground components of wastewater treatment and rain gardens. Is that the 10 percent? That's what I was referring to. So, where was that? Uh, it looks like the third page, first paragraph. Actually, first sentence, the minimum percentage. I think at the start of the page, it's special permit, the minimum percentage of required open space. Oh, Actually, I see. So oh, okay. you're, you're, you're not calling it open space anymore, so that's why that wasn't under allowable uses. You're saying you could reduce the required percent of open space to accommodate septic. That's right. It's under the heading open space requirements, which is on right. Um, right. So I just when you're when you're finalizing this, so you might want to have like a footnote or something for allowable use of the open space to remind people that there can be a reduction in the requirements 30%. that have to meet these uses yeah. for septic. I don't know. Just so it's, mm -hmm. yeah. Because again, if I picture two perfectly rectangular lots and think which would give me less anxiety as a Board of Health member. One in which the septic system is well contained within the lot, so the risks, whatever the linear risks are for surrounding area that's sort of ignoring bedrock fractures about which we cannot know, but that may have substantial impacts. I feel better if you say, this is me, I'm, in, I'm inherently incentivized to make good choices for this because I'm the person because impacts, versus it's if it's, a, if it's in the outside yeah. corner, when you say, Oh, no, no, that's on the whole other side. There's a pipe that goes under, then it goes 500 feet that way and sits 151 feet from the neighbor's well. Oh, I see. So you're, and you're so, so just, again, in thinking about it, I don't know the right way to parse it, but if I think about, I've got this in the middle of my property as part of my 10% or whatever, feels better to me than I have this as far edge. to the edge of my property and as close yeah. to my neighbor's property as humanly possible. That's one of the things that makes me feel less anxious about it because it sort of intrinsically reduces the incentive to game because it most affects you and the people who live near you. So you're motivated to make good choices about how dense you make it, what the choices you make are, and you're less likely to say, I've got this perfectly. We've got a long pipe. We've got the appropriate cleanouts. It's on the whole other end. Right. No, I get it, but I, I, I'm not sure uh, that uh, what you're seeing is a... Is a Parcel, a, a owner's parcel is what would be allowed. That is, it's not each parcel that has, it's not each. The, I, I get this no, large like, property unit. But like, what, it's the like property this picture as a whole. here, right. So if there was like a common septic that was sort of somewhere in the middle. I feel of better those, than if it's at the outside he's saying, edge. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I don't know how one captures that, but kind of conceptually mm -hmm. that part feels more comfortable because the things that have felt not like gaming but when we've seen people optimize the site constraints that they're faced with often it's this is right on the edge and is mostly not affecting where I can build things on my property it mostly meets mm -hmm. the minimum requirements of how possibly close can I get to my neighbor's property right. or, or the neighbor gets to look at a 10-foot wall yeah <laughs> Something but, so that, I'm, so but that's why I think thinking about things like perhaps increasing the setback requirements to abutters especially right. is something that you know could maybe help avoid those right. kind of circumstances yeah. right or yeah. go the other route which I'd like to see and that's improve improve the quality of the effluent going into the ground sure and then nobody has to worry and and how would we do that like our, additional like when, when treatment say, are you saying? is it is it additional treatment or is it larger leach? like I, like I just don't know but I think some of that comes to like that's a some board of, of health reg I mean, the best starting point is don't put anything in your toilet or sinks that you don't want to drink. Yeah. <laughs> Step one. Although I feel like a lot of stuff goes in my toilet that I don't want to eat or drink. That we don't that's want to. But, hand washing. but that has a chance to break down. But I but guess we, the question is how much. But I know, I, but you I don't want to penalize the people who are trying to be. But I guess the question is like what we're so. describing at that level feels like a Board of Health reg. So I think the question yeah. is sort of. What's the planning board reg that influences that? And I think we'd be thinking about setbacks, although I don't know that we have a specific number. Setbacks from a uh, each <coughs> from from a butter. Yeah, yeah, I sort of trust the only HO. twenty feet more right. than than the normal. <coughs> yeah. And I guess I feel like that's the standard way we've always done things. But if we're really going to 
break the mold and go in different directions. And, and again, I don't I know how we can get to, you know, composting toilet requirements would right. be a step in the right direction. Allowing houses to be built on ledge all the time so that we're saving the good soils for septic. But I think that would be another. Uh, but do we want to be change that, or if it's an attempt to go in a more sustainable, different direction? That's a good you goal too. But I don't think it's going to help us much. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I also <laughs> think that those are tactics. That's not a performance standard. I think we want to stay performance standard. We don't want to tell people necessarily you have to do it X, Y, or Z way. We can say the goal is mm -hmm. to minimize impacts on drinking water, you know, on this parcel and abutters, and to provide treatment such that the potential for um, impacts to the right. water supply are minimized, yeah. but, you know. Basically. What I'm thinking with the setback distances, if that's what planning board could do, I think as the world becomes more dense, I'm not so sure we can rely on those rules for that long, because yeah. they've worked, but that's because it hasn't been that long of a history. Yeah. hasn't been many people discharging. And once I think that model, all right, so here's my inner, yeah. inner views, is that model is going to fail but at some point. So do we want to lock it in for this innovative development? Or but is there some little tweak, although I agree it is not that, easy because nobody's figured it out yet. I think that piece, ha <laughs> like I think it's like your piece is the planning board piece, and I think we have to have a separate board of health oh, piece. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think the question for today is sort of answered as, with as much insight as we can answer it. But mm -hmm. I think the kind of larger question of when we then think about this, it's clear that this will be a nuanced consideration, but also that we should include you guys in that discussion so those planning considerations mm -hmm. are kind of pulled into the public health discussion. So just the same way you're, help, you're asking us to help you think about health, we should ask you guys to help us think about so planning I implications. I think we need to have a warrant article. It's okay. becoming clear because we need some outside input. Because I don't have time, yeah. Yeah. you know. So, Board of Health has to find somebody who can help us maybe tease some of this out. Because, you know, I used to think EPA has a division used to have a division to look at yeah. small, smaller community systems and whatever. But I don't think we can um, hope for that anymore. But uh, I think that's uh, it, so we need to do that. But another big and ask for this. Uh, you know, this zoning article we're thinking of for the spring. It may, if it's not ready, it's not ready. We're not going to do it. But um, it might be uh, what we were thinking uh, erroneously last spring was that okay, we'll get this concept out there, mm -hmm. and board of health rules as they now stand will apply. So, if uh, a property comes up that where the board of health rules will work. Uh, then okay, we're not, not okay. Mm -hmm. So there may be very few properties where you like might it, be able use to it as a gatekeeper, essentially. Well, that the, the, the fields at Sherborne works but according it's a 40 to the B. courts. Yeah, right. That's different. That they, and in it doesn't in really some work respects. If we hadn't asked for you know extra analyses, where then it showed it wasn't going to really work for health protection, but in any case, that's the part I'm concerned about, is that allegedly works under mm -hmm. our rules, or even under Title V, and yet the levels of contaminants, but I, because but it was all in one but place, I guess my so question that's is, what, we might, that's the, what I want to avoid having wouldn't have happen. Been, so I think that's what I'm saying, this is an outcome I'm concerned about, but I don't think if I asked you five years ago, are you counting on planning board to solve that problem? Oh, no, no, no. Right. But so I think that's well, a piece of Well, what I want to know like, is... So if you go ahead with this, is there anything that says, and then the Board of Health gets some time to catch up to how to deal with this? Well, Or I, once I, it happens, it's ready to go, and we're... Well, if we were to rewrite it and uh, try to make it sound good from a planning board point of view, um, knowing that we don't do Board of Health work, that's your bailiwick, uh, and we put it out there as a, and maybe it passes because people think it's good, your regulations are still in place. And if a property or a development doesn't pass muster according to your current regulations and your judgment, it wouldn't fly. 
I mean, the planning board is comfortable with that. You guys are in charge. See, but yeah, our judgment it. on the fields, I'll use, I keep but using wait, it as no, a that, that, that was was approval. Isn't that like, a 40B? No, no, but I think but it, your point is it would have satisfied under Sherburn regs without the additional scrutiny. But I think to me that doesn't say this isn't a good planning board article. It just means that this is the time to say, shoot. We, we have, have to, to get, work on this now. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's my That's take what I mean, the this. Warren article yeah. for us to get support, to get us to a different place, because this is what ask. we've been worried about. <laughs> right. I know that's not your ass, but the assumption was that we're okay because we have regs in place. And I think you're we're like, this is a disaster. Well, I don't, Into I mean, I, density, right. if I, we I, had all of these, because we don't think we're ready, because we don't think the regs, they know, were not designed for I don't know that I'd call this. it a disaster. What I'd say, it's a gap and it's a risk. Because I don't think we're going to have, we have 75 people who are like, I totally think pe people will move in Metro West to have 1,800 square feet. There's a bunch that's appealing, but it, this isn't something that we're like, ah, there's a 1,000 units going in. Like, like, I think this is a piece that will have opportunities and flexibility for developers while pr promoting social aims that I think are broadly appealing to <coughs> members of our community. But I think your point is really, this fills me with some sense of foreboding because it feels like this is a place our regulations aren't where we'd like There's to see gap. them to be fully resilient and robust. And I got to spend two years, pretty yeah. much, and Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> but so, the but staff I think, trying to figure that out. So it was painful. But so I think for the question like of like, that again. for me what it feels like is we have to fix our regs. Mm -hmm. but. I feel like we can't hold up and say we can't move forward with, like, I think we can give some guidance, but I don't feel like it's, this can't move forward until our things catch up. Because then we also have, like, we need to have some impetus to say, yeah. we've had lots of other things, like we've thought about manganese and ledge and lots of other things that we spent a lot of time in. If there's not some burning platform to do it, this is a really hard, thorny, incredibly involved issue. I don't see us saying this is the next thing that we think we can crack out in a couple of meetings. Like, this is long <laughs> and involved. Uh -huh. And so I think for us, it's figuring out like how to have that burning platform to say, we're gonna be faced with these, whether it's in the context of this or in terms of other development that may use that strategy. You're not introducing the strategy of shared septic systems or anything else. You're just saying it may be a more likely consequence of planning in this context, but we're gonna be faced with it either way. So it feels like we yeah. sort of have to. Oh yeah. And, and just so you know, Title Five, I was looking at Title Five because I, I was at a conference on this a couple of years ago, but I remember them discussing cluster development is how it's worded in Title V, both in the definition, and they do have a section, Section 292, that addresses cluster development. And one of the items is pretty close to uh, what you put down under number four, proposed revised bylaws under the first bullet number of conventional houses, lots that could have been approved using a standard lot yeah. requirement. Well, in Section 292 of Title V, which is CMR 310, um, they, 310 CMR 15.292, they discuss the same issue that in cluster zoning, you can only have as many houses that could have been supported by individual lots. So you can't increase it. So if you could only fit say 10 houses with septic systems conventional mm -hmm. then that's all you're going to get on yeah. cluster zoning that sounds right. like cluster. I, I, I and that's all that the fields got too and i just want to i just want to pause because we're 45 minutes oh, into this i like the like, latter yeah. formula though better because it takes into account some of the resources so it's su subtracting out that number so that's going to help inhibit you know uber dense sorts of things so well density is ultimately uh, uh, no more dense for the whole parcel than right. a conventional subdivision right. would be, oh, and that already is is a strict limit here. So I was talking density of of contaminants. Well, it's not really like right. the field the fields. No, but it, it but totally that, could the, be because you could say I've got a part like they could make a parcel that's whatever the parcel is. They could build it at whatever density they see fit, and right now we don't have something. Well, so like if it was a 50 acre parcel and you had, what is it, the 60% of that 50 acres is open space. Mm -hmm. So it's a 50 acre parcel in the one acre zoning. So you could have a, hypothetically up to 50 homes in a subdivision, but you now have 30 mm -hmm. acres of that 
being open space and only 20 acres to support the 50 yeah. homes. And so we're saying like there's going to come a tipping point where probably in terms of the protections, and even the if you setbacks, say, oh, no, et cetera. But that would never happen because right. that's not cluster housing. But then you're like, but if it's four cluster housings yeah. right next to each other, yeah. where they say, this is the fields of Sherburn, this is the farms of Sherburn, these are the hills of Sherburn, this is the brook of Sherburn. <laughs> They're all related. They're each their own tiny cluster. Um, I just want to kind of be cognizant of time because I think we also have a fair amount of business left to discuss tonight. Um, I mean, so I, I support the concept. Yeah, I like the concept. I we just have to figure out I mean, how that's people kind of don't where we drink with you bad last, stuff. Last spring, if you recall, you mm. you, you did support the concept, yeah. but realized that there would be uh, things to iron out, yeah. and we sort of you know did a hail mary and said, well, we're going to put it forth, and the board of health rules will apply, whatever those mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. and we kind of punted it, but um, maybe the next. A next good step might be uh, what we were going to do next anyway is to take some sample parcels in town that are up for sale or mm -hmm. have been proposed for development and just see from the planning board point of view what a cluster development might look, look like yeah. on that. Yeah. And we can hand those maps to you and say, okay, uh, would this work at all? Is there mm -hmm. any hope for this? Yeah. Would that be useful to you? These are specific parcels that have their wetlands and their ledge. And I think part of what gets hard is that we don't have the same engineering piece to kind of be able to say, okay, mm -hmm. the system would be need to be this big with this many leash lines. Right. You know, like some of that feels like it gets... So on the one hand, right, it wouldn't make a difference, but I keep going back to the fields. Big enough parcel, met the criteria under four, you know, dot one essentially here. Um, but because all the septic was put into one system shared by all of those units, which might happen with one of these, that might be an efficient way to use land and not have right. a million little septic systems all over. So it makes sense on one level, but again, whoever was going to try and drink water mm -hmm. that was going to be affected by that stuff, it wouldn't be drinkable. So. Um, and I have to say, I think when we met last year, because I unfortunately, uh, as I was discussing with my husband, it was the very first town meeting, I, the second day I missed. I couldn't make two days that week. I had too much going on. And um, so I didn't hear what all the discussions were, but I think the board was comfortable with the concepts. I like the concepts of keeping more open space and clustering things all very appealing. Um, so, but talking now, I'm getting the sense that, right, I, I, and I guess when we talked about it, I thought it was, you know, still lots of other pieces to work out, but maybe the Board of Health piece is the hardest part to work out, at least for, for me. Um, and that, <laughs> I would say and that we got to get ready, as opposed to, I thought it was, you know, <laughs> still being formulated, yeah. and there are lots of other things right. that had to be worked out, and then we would plug in when we yeah. were ready, but it sounds like everything else might be ready to go, and not us. Yeah, I <laughs> so, think we need to get ready. Um, so I think that, on, so it sounds like we've given some general guidance to hopefully inform further edits. I would just say, like again, I think we're 50 minutes in and I feel like we could talk about this for three hours and not yeah. have achieved resolution. So I would say, I think we've kind of given that guidance, but I think for mm -hmm. us as a board, it's also to say this is clearly an issue that will come mm -hmm. to a head. And so I think we've got a bunch We get to work on it. Yes. Could I also say that, let's say there is a parcel that is very real, that you know is about to be sold and this might be the good option to be able to put in front of somebody. Is there any way that we got to figure stuff out on the Board of Health side, but you know, as you said, you could show us a plan, and it mm -hmm. seemed somehow to not be so scary um, from our public health protection perspective. Whether it could be a we can do, that. do we a can. one and then see how it goes mm -hmm. kind of thing and learn from it, and then mm -hmm. that would inform we what we need that. to do, mm -hmm. rather than feeling like if we say, okay, yes, well, I'll go, and then the floodgate opens. Mm -hmm. We definitely can do that. We have four okay. parcel maps that we're working on right now, uh, you know, potential model um, test cases. And um, they're real, real parcels in Sherburn that are up for sale or, mm -hmm. you know, could be developed. So 
yeah, I think that's the way to go forward. And then we'll we'll try to clean up the bylaw and make it as good as we can make it on our planning board end. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we'll try to plug it into these maps and then show it to you and see if it works. Okay. Does anybody, I mean, I feel more comfortable with the idea that we take a step, we're saying yes to a project at a time versus all. But I think the point of this is to say, as a developer, I don't want to be the project of a time because then I have to come before you and have this conversation where I want well, to have general. They have time. to anyway, though, because the no, but our if regulations you say, to apply. But but I think like if you're saying what's the upside to a developer, it's not the opportunity to be considered on a case by case basis with individual adjudication. Oh, no, we need rules. It's to say here's yeah. the rule. I can look at that when I'm choosing to buy this parcel. I will know what happens and what I can build. Not. They said they're generally supportive, but they'll consider it case by case. And so I think there's a front end of this that's that, but it seems like the fundamental goal for you guys is to say this is by right, so that people mm -hmm. know the parameters, but then can proceed without justifying their own individual right. project. Yeah, but if there are projects that will that come before it's we, by right. We feel it looks pretty good, yeah. It'd be nice to allow that to move along and not take a, a weird path yeah. that we would think would be... Yeah, I think, I think we get some other. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, we're going to do 24 North yep, Main. 24 North Main. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 24 North Main. We have not received word back from DEP on their review of that property. They are. They did respond to us today saying they're sorry. And, We'll try to get us a response as soon as possible. So did you have something in particular that? Uh, so my GSA the letter. So, yeah, no, so we've got Paul's letter, but it's, but DEP has not. Has not responded to the letter. But so. they indicated that they are in the process of responding, responding. to the letter and that, that it should be soon. Yeah. And then I guess the other question is, the only plans I have now are still the three-bedroom plans? Yeah, it shows three bedrooms. I know, but it it's doesn't like the plan that. we have is three. It says bedroom, bedroom, bedroom. Yeah. No. Right. It's, it's, it, the the text in the letter says two, but the plan says three. Yeah. Okay. And also, right, so um, the plan needs to be revised. So are you planning, it looks like on the website for the spa that there it's not just a beauty salon it's a true spa right massages and facials and are, is there food as well beverages okay because that is pictured on the website so it's for people who So people can have events there, in other words. If they bring their own food in, not a problem. If it's yeah. within their family and not a catered event. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a catered event offered by the business, that's different. In the past, they did have a food permit. Uh, they used to offer tea and coffee and small desserts. Okay, so they have enough water and septic to support that. Because that somehow was, built uh, into incidental. the spa. We considered incidental to it because it was barely anything we had to wash because it was more or less just a teacup and mostly pre it was prepackaged desserts oh. and okay. so forth. Very so limited. So it sounds like in terms of the board can't consider because we don't have current plans that reflect right. the two-bedroom plans. We've got a three-bedroom plan, and it sounds like we're waiting for the guidance from the state, Correct. which we expect to yeah. be forthcoming. Unfortunately, I didn't recognize the owner. I would have yeah. said maybe before the hearing, yeah. I would have mentioned it to the board. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we can't. But I think like we don't even have plans. Like the plans we have are three bedrooms, and you're saying no, no, it's two bedrooms. Two but bedrooms. Right, right, right. But all I have is three bedrooms, yeah. and so you saying it's two bedrooms. No, no. But I need, I need, I, I need that as a record that says this is two bedrooms. You, this, you need to give us the plan that shows only two bedrooms. The only plan we yeah. have right now shows three bedrooms. So it's and so we totally hear that you're saying it's two bedrooms. What we're saying yeah. is I have to have a plan that shows two bedrooms before I can approve a plan, because the only plan I have is three bedrooms. So once we have a plan, 
Well, and depending DP on what DEP says. Right. DEP doesn't mind. If DEP so, says it. There's no, uh, no objections. So well, I think what. No, so no, I would. Well, we so need all we, the details, we need all the, and we need all the, you never, I can't, maybe, Right. <laughs> but if we just say yes, sure, it'll work out, <laughs> then you'll be disappointed we, I, if we find a, right. a detail that we didn't know about before and have to but, take that but in terms consideration. Of giving, like, I think your question is to the degree possible, what clarity can I have? So I think for us, if it were obvious and clear to DEP, we may have expected a different response than we've gotten so far, so it's not obvious to us that DEP has no concern, so we don't want to say absolutely. I think one of the questions that's outstanding for me is the degree to which each thing can be counted the way it's counted. So can we sort of divide this building into two use cases that are treated totally distinctly? Here's the upstairs, which is a two bedroom, and here's how we'll count it by these regulations. Here's a downstairs, we're gonna count that by a different set of regulations. I think is one of the questions for DEP. If it's the same building and the same traffic system, can it be treated by two different standards for upstairs and downstairs? And also, can we have something that's not EA and is only two bedrooms? That, it, like I say, it's interesting. I've yeah. never run into this before. It's it's more or less combined uses. Mixed use. Yeah, yeah mixed use. And we're going to see more of it. It's right. not the first. It won't be the last. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, but I've never seen it yet here. Okay. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they combine the. Maybe. Are they going to make them go to minimum three bedrooms? I'm not for sure, even though it shows it as two bedrooms because they. You know, it's going to be interesting. It might. I'm waiting for the answer. Okay, so maybe if you could add that as an explicit question for Claire on. Uh, on from the. Can we just go off of the two bedrooms and and calculate from there if we get to that point? And then I guess for us, and I think the other one that is a Sherburn question that we haven't answered is the rooms above the second floor. And in the instance when the first floor is a business, to me that feels different because, you know, it's sort of the patterns of use and the intent. If you're saying the entirety of the space is above the second floor because the first is, in, is fully... We've had in. things that right. are similar, you know, right. the inverted houses yeah. where all the bedrooms are right. in the basement and then the... But this is different because it's like commercial so, space where like... Yeah in its current pattern of use, there's really, like I think there's a piece that you sort of say, we infer it. For this case, if you do say these are two bedrooms, here's a plan, sort of change the labeling, how do we treat that third room that's listed as a bedroom in the old plans as I a room I think we above? might already have that for the property on the other side of Roses. That's a business, right? Yes. On the oh. ground floor and then a living space above? The I don't believe company. Living, yeah. Is it the living space but in I the think back? So oh. Above Rose's garage? No, 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 not Rose's Wise's. Oh, Remember, oh, Wise's. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a com real combination of the kitchen. Yeah. It used to be the real and, and estate so me, office. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. to me, if, yeah, so if there's a, a if there's a commercial so space on the first floor, floor occupying the first floor, to me, the second floor feels like, from a okay. residential standpoint, it's not the, the same. It, it's the first floor, yeah. and and then I think you go to the kind of conventional room count as opposed to saying it's a second floor. So for that piece. It feels like the Sherburn reg, as intended, is for a single contiguous, single family home, and the application to a multi use building wouldn't make sense to just like about everything a bedroom just because it's on the second floor, because the first floor is unrelated to the residential use. And so I think that isn't a DEP question. I think it's a question that should be of relevance to you, but it doesn't sound like the board has any discomfort with that. So if we sort of. So if we took this as a, so if we took this as, a sort of room count piece, we'd have a five room, which would round. We don't have rounding rules. Be, oh, that's the other gap is the like, our rounding rules start at eight, and that's because the state considers everything a single family. Well, that gets history. back to the two bedroom. Three, yeah. We already asked that question. Okay. So I think and so that's an extent. Yeah. Perfect. So it sounds like there's no prohibitive concerns. It's just we need guidance from the state, and it's hard to say a blanket. No, it'll be totally fine as long as they say it's okay. But I think those are the key questions, and it doesn't sound like any of the Sherburn specific regs about bedroom count apply. Right, and we also need to look at the um, loadings for uh, or the required sizing for a spa versus a, a beauty shop. salon. Because I believe well, they're different. All, but that's that DEP, right? Th described in what was provided to DEP or no? Um, 
I don't have it right with me because yeah. I knew I hadn't received the letter yet, but I'm not for sure. But I, I believe think when they Paul know it's a spark. spoke about it, he yeah. talked yeah. about two chairs versus the three they versus originally. spa, and I think two chairs is less than a spa. So I think we need the numbers on spa. spa I know, but it's DEP right. who has to make that decision. So. But so it sounds like that's where the DEP questions is. Sure. Just hand washing would be maybe one of the areas for the spa, such as a therapist needs to have a hand wash sink in each room, um, so massage therapist. So that's and that would increase to some degree hand washing water use. Um, and my sense is while we didn't have anything specific from Claire. This was something we expected to hear in relatively short order. And she called today to apologize. That they just and, and sounds like was apologetic that it mm -hmm. wasn't resolved yet. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like our hope would be to be able to have that back. Are we meeting? I would hope for the next meeting. Yeah, the nineteenth. Yeah. So we would have a, a goal to have it resolved by the next meeting. I would hope. No, it's not posted yet. But that's our regular meeting night. Every. Two weeks on this other the first yeah. and third Wednesday. And so, should we have a goal to have this on the agenda for the, the meeting and then have it resolved? The meeting calendar is on the website. <laughs> yeah. Six I, weeks, and I don't want to be here when DP says we have no issues. Yeah. And then I come back here and I start to start raising all these other issues. Yeah, I think, I mean. Which you haven't raised now, and let's say. I, I think, yeah, I think we're doing the best we can, and like we don't have current plans. We're waiting for this date. So like, if you had plans now that didn't say three bedrooms, that would certainly make my job easier. If, that's not how it works. And so I think that if you say you're wasting this time, like I don't have the right plans. That's not my responsibility. I don't think no. What did he say? He, he said he gave us two-bedroom plan. No, you, no. Don't you said it, you said it. But, but that's not what this... And then we said this we is, need. If you want to see, this is what we were provided. Right. Right. You made the I don't... More original that's, what, that's all yeah. we have. I've right. never got different and, plans. And so we are totally happy to address that in three bedrooms. Right. Right. This is a plan that I sent to Ellen mm -hmm. originally. And then when they came to the meeting, I passed it on up to the I don't, I don't have it. I don't remember that. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not. That, that was an original plan. Yeah. I don't, I, don't rec I don't dispute I, it. I just don't recall right. it. But what I would say is I think our goal is to resolve it as quickly as possible. I can't promise you resolve it the 19th. What I can say is I don't have a way to make it a higher priority. And I'm certainly not comfortable giving a blanket as long as this doesn't happen. Yeah. No, what I'm saying is that once you get the. Yeah. Right. And so. Right. I don't anticipate other issues, but I don't know what the guidance well, would be. Well, if I can, the well may be in question. I think DEP is looking at past histories of that well. But I think Maybe that's separate. Like, I think for your question the of the residential subject. portion. The residential, I'm not for sure. I'll let them know that, you know, it's coming in as two bedrooms, not three. Right. But, 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 but you I can't give a oh, certificate of occupancy for something that doesn't have if there's a well issue right? but i think yeah, your question right now is you're not raising a well issue with us that may be an issue that would be an example yeah, of an issue that would be very visit but i think for your question of i think what we're opining on here is the septic system not yeah the we're concerned about that they may have concern the well is a public water supply so that's handled by dep okay so from a things that may come up from board of health if it's a public water supply that won't come from from Sherburne Board of Health. It's really just a question of the septic use patterns. That's that's our decision. In terms of the totality of the questions, it's does the current use apply for the volume that is considered here as a beauty a beauty salon versus a spa. The other question is in terms of the kind of change in use and the ability to apply two standards: one for residential, one for the commercial on the ground floor. And then the last is, can it be considered a, as non-EA housing, a two-housing unit, single-family dwelling? Yeah, those are um, DEP. The other thing is, so here, 
it's referring to it as a beauty salon. We need accurate language in what gets proposed to us, so it needs to go back to being a spa, if that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, on your website, I see pictures, and I see four chairs plus a chair for hair washing. I don't know how they count. I've never had to look at beauty salons before, but we need plans that show the commercial, if the commercial what space it's going to look like the after. And that's where the chairs are going to be, or keep it as a salon and figure out the gallonage from that. But it all has to be accurate when it comes into us. We can't do it by verbal, oh, no, no, it's really two bedrooms. As Matt said, we have to right. have something. And again, I'm not saying you did, I don't recall it that way, but record, I could so. totally be misrecalling it was a month ago. But so in terms of the concrete things we want, we would want a floor, like here's the layout and a assertion by the applicant of this is how many chairs are for the beauty salon these are the patterns of use and it would be the board's expectation that that would be accurate we it doesn't sound like we need a plan or a design or a layout for the ground floor we just need a statement of fact of this is four chairs or this is two chairs but we don't care where the right like we're not adjudicating what what the space is we're just saying this is the assertion if we are applying two standards you're saying this is how many seats are in use for this the salon this is the water throughput. And thing. DEP has a flow chart for salons. Okay. And but for that, we don't need a floor plan at all. We just need a chair count. Well, we'd like to see a floor plan. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, I would love many things. I think in terms of asking what can we get in the next two weeks to ask sure. the applicant, do we need a floor plan to make our decisions? Could you hand draw one with pencil and ruler just to show the rooms and the chairs? Yeah. What? So we know if there's I a massage therapy room with the hand I think that'd be better in case there's another bedroom downstairs. Okay. We need to have the rooms identified, I think. Okay. Given that Did it'll be mixed use, we need to right. know and who's also using what how. It's also just not for your use. It's also who may buy that in the future. So I think being able to say this was how we understood it to be so that if questions come up with a future owner, that's clear. Okay. And, and there's no issue in terms of... Um, like the town zoning to have a mixed use. Well, I think right? that's a that's ZBA already, hearing. That's already been done. Yeah. Oh, they're waiting for us. Okay. 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 We're Got waiting it. for you. As soon as you <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So it sounds like I totally hear your frustration <laughs> and want to resolve it as expediently as possible. Looking back at it, this issue's going back 18 years. So I promise we'll work really hard in the next two weeks, but. The parts of it that are complicated and the parts of it that are out of our hands but i think yeah. hopefully we make clear we're trying to think about all the issues so there are no surprises two weeks from now to get it resolved yeah they they have barbershop beauty salon 100 gallons per chair okay in title five and so i think for us it just does do spa, spa equal beauty they salon. don't have the spa right. would have i'm sorry no no but i think that's a question mark if spa okay. equals beauty salon yeah. great we're all set if spa yeah, equals different then we need guidance from them and we might have action. to get twice the readings of a meter it, it gets complicated we can ask mm -hmm. and I, I don't they don't have spa in here i don't think spa except they around. figured it out once before right for yeah, the spa so dep right. Or so are, whoever is, has but, but some I think documentation that, but I think that's somewhere. That's a question mark. So I would say that's one of the questions for yes. them: is has something changed in the interview? So currently, we have four stations, which is under. And you're cutting it in half. Right. So, it, it, the question is: if you keep all the use the same, but you're cutting the but capacity we don't know. in half. No, no, no. I'm saying, okay. assuming that yeah. that so oh, that it met the requirements yeah. okay. before for those uses. Okay. Then I think that's a lot, a pretty simple question for DP to right. answer. Is like, okay, well, yes, you can take half of the design flow requirements for whatever the spa. And, and I guess the before. other question I have Plus. is, I know, and I don't know if it was you or a sort of previous owner, but there's issues with that was the first approval, and then there was the issue that it was massively over that for the actual use case. Because I think those were those were resolved though. I think it was resolved, but if you say, here's the flow, here's the flow. Yeah, it's not clear it was. But, like, here, here's, here's the, the flow, problem. please, that we used to calculate it. And then the actual observed flow on the property was a multiple of that. Well, that's what I was, that, that flow. that's what I was going to ask, Mark. So, in terms of flow, is there any way of understanding, like, empirically, okay, like, for over the last year, we could figure out that the monthly average was X. And so if, if you're cutting it in half, then we could be anticipating that the new amount like would be... Do you have a water meter on your well? We so that, is that... Is we that, that statistics for the last 
Yeah. So that because I don't think we saw that, did we? Mm -hmm. I don't think. I think that's a DEP I call anyway. Yeah. yeah, they. But there's empirical information, is all I'm right. saying. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 Okay, but it sounds so like that would be something. The question that would be to be give that to DEP, DEP. now for. Like yeah. if that oh yeah, a, no, no, no. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to right. do with it. <laughs> but I think but it's it, like it if, exists. If that so. data is available, it may be yeah. helpful to get that to Mark. So if that informs yeah. that piece with Claire, then that would be great to resolve in that conversation as opposed to having it come up at the next meeting. Another thing that would be helpful. So the things we've asked for: more accurate descriptions right. and precise floor plans, all floors, and get that to Mark at least a week before our next meeting, yeah. so then he can look at it, and if he says, oops, this is still missing if Paul forgets so, or whatever, yeah. so is that, that so would Paul's, also ensure that the 19th goes more smoothly. So maybe just to make that specific, so the goal would be to have all those materials to mark by no later than December 12th. Yeah, December, one, one week December from today. 12th, a week from today. <laughs> yeah. And if you already have the two bedroom, then you're halfway there on the plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could be even earlier. Okay. All right. And can we make, the, is it possible to make that a schedule? Because I know you spent a long time waiting for this. Is there a way no, for us to? Oh, absolutely. No, but I, I'm also just trying to. We have two variance hearings and one other appointment already yeah. scheduled. They're on yeah. the schedule already? Yeah. Okay. So. I'm just trying to figure out if we know that we're um, going to have this discussion two weeks from now, is there a way to make it so you can <coughs> say, I'll show yeah, up at eight if it's Two variance eight. hearings plus 26 Bullard. Um, how long do you think 26 bullet would take? 26 half minutes. Half hour? Yeah. yeah. So that's 18, Nine. so it would be 8.45, 8.40 for this? Yeah. Or we could just call it 9 and fill it with other Filleth. things so you don't maybe we just yeah. don't less keep chance of sitting for here. for two hours to right. talk for 15 minutes. So do you want to try to schedule for 9 o'clock on the 19th? What's that? I mean, it, yeah. it sounded it, it, like it was it, imminent. It, it, yeah. I think, I think we expect but to. I think, I think we should be getting it in again. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Right. And then, so maybe can we just give an update by, so when you have the communication on the 12th, if we can just plan to provide an update if we've heard from DEP so that he can know, yes, they've heard, no, they haven't. So if there are questions there that we need to flesh out to flesh as much as that before the meeting. Prior, yeah. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll do your next agent's business. Okay. 136. Oops. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very sensitive mics here. And, uh, what the applicant wished to do is to add a room into an area where he already has a full bathroom. He wanted to put a kitchen area and a finished room in the barn garage. It's been defined both ways. Mark, what's the number of, on that building application? Okay. And Thank you. So the problem was the house is a five bedroom septic system, passing Title V last year, but I can't forget the exception is that they have a bathroom in the barn without any Perfect. just notice of where it's going. Hopefully it's going into the septic tank. But the house itself has five bedrooms on the second floor. He was originally going to propose to cut one bedroom, make two bedrooms into one, mm -hmm. but he, he wishes not to. So we have an engineer, Paul Sonier, sent a letter to us and Again, here's a larger version of that room. And the first floor and basement rooms, uh, that's where Is this at grade? Uh, there is a second floor to it that goes to a second floor. But your so question is, I, is that at grade? It's not a basement, it's, a, it's at grade. Yeah. It's at grade. Yeah, it was shown as a garage originally. No, right. it's yeah. well out of the ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Might I even think it's have like a drive in something underneath, underneath but I'm not okay. positive. Yeah, I haven't been on the Maybe. Bottom, so. And then the basement of the house has this area, you can count as one or two, 
That's why I put two or three rooms in it, plus a closed off game room. Mm. And then the first floor has six rooms, or it could, I counted six. Some rooms heated, two is the family room, three is the kitchen eating area, four are dining room, and five is a living room and a library. So it's a big house. And if you didn't have the basement rooms, it might come down to 11 rooms, which would be perfect for the five bedroom septic design. I think the basement rooms might have been put in after the fact. I just don't know. I have no permits to show that they were put in with could have been part of when the house was built. Um, when the house was built back in 1994, and it was right at the time period where extra rooms weren't an issue, so it could have been okay per those codes. So what the engineer has done is the septic system was replaced. It's a 1994 septic. It was replaced, I have the year on it. It was replaced in two, the field itself was replaced in 2012. So was it, was it, it why was, was it replaced? It, it, the field itself had solidified. Failed so it, it failed. But so at the time that they did that replacement, didn't this whole room count issue come up? Paul showed it still as a five bedroom and it didn't come up. Or if it did. Because you're sort of like, I'm replacing a five bedroom system with a five bedroom yeah, system. It was just, yeah, and he was and replacing the legion. Right. But, but no one saw the. Be, right. 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 On the right. septic replacement, right. yeah. Yeah. So you don't go look by at, the engineers. You don't look at the definition of what they put on the septic plan, which is five bedrooms. So we hope they go in the house. Sometimes they don't. So lately, we've been pulling the census records to be sure that we know the room going as well. So what Paul's showing on his letter is that the septic system with the garbage grinder suffices for a five bedroom. But if you take the garbage grinder away, it could suffice for seven bedrooms question in his letter is, he says he, in the one, two, three, four, the fourth paragraph, last sentence, if the garbage grinder is removed and enforced by a deed recording, prohibiting the use of the garbage grinder, then the existing leaking field exceeds the Title five requirements by 149 square feet. It's really the, what about the paragraph after that, that the septic tank's capacity 2000, no. doesn't meet the... I mean, that's a 15% change you're looking for. That I'm not comfortable with. So the re-rating it and taking out garbage grinders, if they stick to not putting a garbage grinder back in, that's much better for everything overall. So, so what can you do about And then it makes it easy to call this a bedroom. Right. With the attached bath, because we have... So and maybe that gets a septic tank. Well, that's what I was going to say. So, so the fix could be if they get rid of the garbage grinder, put a deed restriction on, coupled with adding an additional tank, then it's probably a workable and situation. And that gives a chance to find out where this is going. Yeah. Yeah, we're hoping it goes into the present septic tank. But, and this wasn't but it's undersized, so, <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Right. It wasn't this owner that did all this. Yeah. No, no, but I, I think it's just the question of, that's fine. But, but we are we're here, we're, we're where right. we are now. But, but it's yes. not that we mean to imply he's done anything untoward. It's really right. that he's walked yeah. into this and is saying, I'm trying to use this space. So for us, room count wise, we feel comfortable with that. But septic tank wise, the tank we, they're going to need. I, I wouldn't say augment. I'm eager to yeah, I don't wanna undermine those protections when yeah. there's also other solutions. Right, yeah. right. And, and what if what if they wanted to replace the tank with a larger tank? Would that be allowed without a variance? Yeah, they could go over 2,500. Two so they could either say <laughs> I'm choosing. They have two options. To, to, right, they've got two you options. You can add a tank. Right, or you can. But there's no compelling reason for the Board of Health to grant a variance no. to say, oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Just don't do either of those no. two available options. Right. No. Ultimately, yeah, it would I don't be a so. better option to go with a new tank. Just because a bigger a tank. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so a double. The current one is a single? I believe it's single oh. for the original. Okay. Is that pretty um, big for a single? <coughs> well, well so it's just not two compartments, so it doesn't. So in terms of the flow of stuff, so, so it sounds like we wouldn't approve the sep the question raised here. We would be comfortable with the first portion, but we're not with with the with the conditions. The garbage grinder deed restrictions. Yeah, right. right. And removal of it. They right. actually have the revision. I can pull the original plan from Sammy Otis. Single. So you erased everything. Showed as a single. Okay. So. 
Okay. Well, all right. So, okay. so do we need and to? And do you know what you would specify no. if it? It's, it's an, a not. tank it's here. A it's well, a here. This is what the board would have to do: is still consider the tank size with a garbage collector. And that's where, if you're looking at it that way, you take 200 percent of that, and that's where you get over the design flow. If you consider the design flow 825, well, that's five bedrooms. No, he so was he did the math that. here, yeah, saying he that this this wasn't with the garbage grinder. This was just saying yeah. four seven bedrooms. Oh, yeah, the you need. Yeah, right. It's three times that's seven seventy, and that's twenty three ten, and it's so it's three hundred over. So it's yeah, you know that's not like fifty. Right, that's but it's also like they're viable solutions that aren't an undue burden. Absolutely. Bird. Yeah. Uh, are we losing something by having uh, you know a tank attached here and then another tank? <coughs> Well, you know, I mean, without the two compartment, that's clearly yeah. not as good as a two compartment well, tank. I so that's the best. But, but I mean, it, it could either of the, those options be workable? They're workable, but I, I would say if they're doing just a second tank, that would have to be two compartment, minimum 1,500 with an affluent filter, but it's only serving the barn. Right. Uh, so that seems like a lot of tank. Yeah. yeah for right. Right. So <laughs> it would be best to send it to the new two. Are, yeah, frankly, down. once you're putting in a 1,500 gallon, but I'm not doing 2,500. But, yeah. but and then I just you can use the old yeah. spot. Yeah. But they have two options. Right. Okay, yeah. they have two you options. Know, they should be aware of the fact the old system failed, so they're probably better off with a two compartment. Right, yeah. but again, you I think we can that, say whatever but, but makes that's them not happy. Not a requirement. Right. right, whatever makes yeah. them happy. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So, so Mark will communicate that guidance to the engineer. And this works. So if it's 11. 14, 15, so it works. So, it's it's still seven. Right. Seven yep. is seven. Yep. Yep. So board, that's good. <laughs> yeah. The board asked Five and that's about six bedrooms. Yeah. And there was some discussion on it. Didn't board. they? I think we said don't finish it. Exactly. Yeah. That's my recollection. So we'll keep that in case <laughs> but, right. Asked. And I would say don't. Keep it aloft that, or whatever. Well, because then it, if you okay. do finish it, then it breaks this. Uh, because then you're And then it's eight bedrooms. Right. Uh, right. So at some point you'll be coming back with another plan, and what we should remember to do is to condition it on no other rooms being finished or something like that. Just so it goes in the record as a reminder to anybody else who might come later and buy the property and need to understand. Can you? I mean, when if they're putting the deed restriction, can't they also say I'm limited to? Seven bedrooms, or All right. no, they're going to have to do a do They can do it there as well. Lappy, Lappy Woodland Street. Is is that the one that they had the second well? The house. The second, the second well, the irrigation well. No, no, that's the other house. This is the one that had the. Oh, that one. I have a. Well, that's Ashley. Is it? It's Ashley, not Woodland. That's not Woodland. Maybe it's a different one. Um, this is. Oh, the it goes from one side of the uh, woodland to the other side. Who's the applicant? Um, and it, yeah, that's not me. Sorry. That was Mark. I was that wasn't me. You. I was trying to, Joe. I'm sorry. sorry. I know. What, oh, this is um, that giant white house. You know, uh, that one that was for sale? It must I, have been I, I, I know um, where this where is. Where are we? They have a tennis Cross. court, right? No. Am I, do I have? So Who's I think I am. Walking across the I, I, yeah. I am um, roughly oh, at. Yeah, so I look at it like. Because <laughs> I, I, I think I'm here. Yeah, you're Oh, close. bye. Yeah. I'm just See ya. No, no, I'm good. So this is way, like, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so there's Mill Street, and that's the little intersection. And then Who's the applicant? Left. I know this area well. well. Yeah, I did. I grew up there. This is, isn't this that giant White House? Yeah. It that, looks that's on that the other side of Cross yeah, Street. Um, that's, no, yes, that's yeah. the yeah. Bothfell's yeah. house yeah. is how yeah. I know Just, it is. That's a good point, Ellen. This was not officially submitted for review. Okay. But I didn't call him up and tell him I would ask the board. So what's the, the question? The general question. The general question is he wants to put in a whole three-bedroom septic system for the pool cabana he's wishing to build for this house. Normally you tie your pool cabana into the house. We saw that down on mm -hmm. yep. Mason Hill Lane. Yeah. Um, and I told him that, and I said, we did have one exception to the rule. This gentleman, David Parrish, happens to live near that house, 45 Greenwood Street. Uh, their exception to the rule is they were allowed a tight tank because their septic system would not suffice 
Well, yeah. their pool can be in there. They yeah. had a cesspool and the state allowed them, but they, as I said, the state does not they really allow did not want the tight to. tanks. Yeah. But their situation was they couldn't even consider a set, uh, uh, tying into their septic system. It wasn't, it was the old cesspool. It was inadequate. Yeah. I don't know, I told them it'd be nice to know what you have for a, se I know where the well is, but I don't know what they have for a septic mm. system down here. For the, house, for the house, it's a cesspool. It's a cesspool. Oh. Yeah. So there may be that opportunity then, as they had at 45 Greenwood, but I told them, I don't know why, they soil tested, and I think, the construction here. He also said to me, the in the future, if they want to change that and cut the prop, make it a subdivide, lot and make the, because that pool house might become a house. What? Well. <laughs> Now it's a different it's yeah. a It's definitely not a pool house anymore. So the, so the thing, performance-wise, it's not good to have, just like on the Cape, to have a septic system that's only used at very low levels in part of the year. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The biomat doesn't yeah. It's like survive. the composting toilet. You want to keep it working. Well, that working might be a noise. solution here, a composting toilet. But all we need is the composting toilet. You know, well, I'm and the idea that this house, magnificent house has, has a cesspool a that's is great. just how, crazy. How it's can huge. That happen? It's changed because it's because we need our cesspool. No, right? because it somehow <laughs> it somehow passed. Yeah. It must yeah. have passed yeah. because it was sold recently. I, it's yeah. I can't it's believe sold many that. Times. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up here and I know oh, that. Oh yeah. 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 So yeah. So that. I told him I would share his request to the board, but there's been no application of fee or anything. This is just a quick overview to say. So this is considered new construction <coughs> with a second septic. It's, I mean, it's, it's a considered a septic system for a pool cabana on an existing lot. But so, but so they couldn't subdivide. I mean, if we approved it, oh, for if they decided to subdivide, that's a whole new story. They're going to yeah. have to come in for that. Yeah, and but that, how, that how do how, I know, but so what? what's the catch if well, they put this in, yeah. they put in this, and then, and then like two years from now they say we're subdividing it and we're selling this to someone else. We still have this old house with a <laughs> cesspool. Yeah, you know what would be interesting to find out is GLM was testing for the house at the time they did this testing back in... 2007. Oh, 11 years true, because ago. what if that's the only decent that's, place to put it? Yeah. Right, and so and when this fails, they they should be considering that when yeah. they're putting it in. We'd have to go back to the records. I didn't do much research because I it, there's no fee involved yet. And I said, to, you know, it's just a general discussion on what we allowed at one property in town because they had no other solution for the pool cabana house. And he, he did indicate. Yeah, he would be okay with a tight tank, but maybe you now with the new technology and composters, he might even in a rain garden. I think I'd rather that they do something Not like a that. Rain garden, but a, a because, garden and I wish that planning board was here to see this one because <laughs> the whole idea of stuff you could never anticipate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try I asked, asked why is it called Lot B? I asked, what's the address? There's a house there. Well, it's 89. And I said, well, then why the plan should say 89? He goes, oh, well, no. Well, wait, so are these two uh, separate so lots? Or are no, they right one now it's one lot. Willing, but he's it's saying one lot. For this property. Yeah. But it's being it's called lot because because That seems very shaky yeah. to me. Something, yeah. something doesn't smell right. It is <laughs> kind of smacking us in the face that this is so heading in another direction that could cut off something that could be done better for so this in house. addition to my idea to put the one residence one well one residence one septic because that would always mm -hmm. make it be that it has to be compliant so if they want to add something they have to bring it to today's standards mm -hmm. yeah you know mm -hmm. it doesn't show mm -hmm. the acreage <laughs> oh here it is right here i'm looking at 6.9 acres so it's well that seems size. about right like seven. What, what's what do you ask me? Is is that really the place you think it is? It is. No, 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 no. I'm not asking that. Oh. I'm thinking ahead about the whole idea of oh, you really? know how I wanted to put a regulation mm -hmm. that said one residence one wall. Yeah. To make one residence one septic. 
We can research because that would the, uh, keep everything current, so even as people are adding on. Or why do we not have a regulation so that says the application? I don't understand. Well, we talked about that. We just don't have yeah. it on the books yet. Well, well, we should might say repair versus new. Volunteer to fix, help if they that. This sort of testing for repair. Well, how about that? You can't. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can't okay. get approval for a new septic if your current your property currently has a cesspool. Mm. That's a good criteria. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're seeing the first of something I've never seen either. If, if you have an operating yeah. for a pool, a pool, pool, pool cabana, yeah. that's I agree. very it, fishy. Something doesn't add up. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, this is what's going to happen. That's why I brought it to you. Just so you <laughs> they're going to they're gonna do this. They're going to build it. Okay. Yeah. Don't waste <laughs> yeah. the, I, Which is okay. Scientifically, yeah. may as well hear it, but yeah. it's a problem of it resting up. Just yeah, no, it's tanks, not going to be good. The, the field it, will dry out. But the a tank composting will be a toilet would be much better. Yes, I agree. So I'll the, see if I can talk. So to what's the guy. um? And what about their existing well? They they're not asking for additional capacity or anything. No, right now they don't even show a water line going into the pool cabana. So, so they I mean, show a septic going out to. So how can that be? Yet another that, strange. How, how can that how can that be, Mark? <laughs> yeah, because uh, they'll truck in water and they'll fill the pool that no, way. No, no, no. no. no I'm talking about in here. So if oh, you, yeah, how if can you, you have a toilet a <laughs> for that, no, you, where's you, the water you coming over. from? Yeah, that's the so there, there, there. Gin and tonics out by the pool. So, so that's another question, <laughs> water line. Okay. And and also the lot clarification, just wh why is, it, why is there an address for the property that's existing from the lot? The septic for the big house that's on the same lot? It doesn't mean? show the setback, yeah. so yeah, we would, we would like it? to see that as well. Because there are setbacks from that. So, um, and, and not just that, could they use the cesspool? Because it's the same amount of people that live here in that cesspool as that live here are using the pool house. I'm confused about what they're putting in here. <laughs> Like yeah, how big the inside of the pool cabana house? Yeah, the just what the layout's going to be. Is it going to be? Is there going to be one bathroom? What, and why can't they tie into the original system? You know, it's the same people using it. It's right. not like they're going to be using more water. Well, so, if they put in another bathroom, so they're not. They're, well, are they, they going to put they, in a kitchen? They, there or has to be well, a water supply to provide effluent. Right? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. they will put water in. But again, if they, even if they had a little kitchenette, they, they the tea they cook here that day, or they come up here. If they have a party, they cook just as much down here, probably as up here. We want to see the layout of what they're proposing to to put in there. Mm -hmm. Into house. Because oh, because if there's spaces that need to be counted as bedrooms, then yeah. That's then true. it just sort of yeah. shifts the whole dynamic, and yeah, yeah. If, if you could oh, yeah. live in there, right? If it becomes seat. a guest house, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So who else will that? That, that sounds you from this. And a fee, obviously, either preliminary building application fee or yeah. septic application fee, because they haven't even. Okay. Thank okay. you. I appreciate all that input. And then the fields. The fields came back with some different when plans. Matt can come back. <laughs> Come on right, down. Be careful of the microphones. Um, <laughs> they basically, with some changes made with the public water supply. <laughs> we're just going to reach over and, like, <laughs> <Wait, laughs> Rimba's over here. here. Thank you. Uh, shut them off. Yeah. Um, now he's trying to turn off your mics. <laughs> at least the switch to hit it. We keep it up until you stay on. Uh, but anyways, um, so what they're doing is they brought in a double wall here. They're making the wall smaller in height, but they had to double it up. And I'll show you on a bigger plan. And the actual septic tank field, which is right here, the circle around it, shifted a little bit. And that's because of the public water supply. The wells are up here pretty much at scale. Mark, well, would you repeat that? What shifted a little bit? I think yeah. they're down here. Oh, down. Yes, you're right, Daryl. Okay. So, according to the letter, I can show you the old plan there. The um, reduction in the overall development area and the removal of the on site private wells, the septic tank location along the pump lines adjusted. So, they adjusted them a little bit. It's pretty much in the same area, but they, he said they got adjusted a little bit this way. And I can show you the old plan if you want. 
He just delivered these today. Oh, yeah. then. Well, he gave me the letter a while back. I said, I need a larger plan to look at the type. The other part was okay. The so, um, I'll show you the larger plan. I mean, I wouldn't want to, if you haven't had enough time to review with him. Well, I reviewed the, the today. wall, but I saw him Friday even. And I said, you know, because we had a out in the field type of discussion, oh. see where they're at. He did deliver these plans, but it shows the larger part of the tank, but I, I couldn't compare it to the original plan yeah, to show the shift. Yeah, why don't we, yeah. You sure? Yeah, I don't think yeah. I want, because they're complex enough. You'd want to be carefully considered if you like these have got their do right. door okay. review. Because right. they were supposed to be here Monday. They were supposed to be here a week ago. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I think it's right. I'd rather have it be reviewed so carefully so everybody's happy. Uh, We're going to depend on your assessment. So yeah. <laughs> you haven't had so, time to assess. Okay, so not. So this is de so deferring. Right. No, no action from the no. board tonight. So I think we have done everything except for minutes and payroll. Yeah. So. Uh, Rick, did I do all my stuff? We just. Uh, uh, one question oh. came up. Um, yeah, they're all done. Uh, just in terms of thinking about the position, I don't know that we need to sort of conduct as formal business, but just making sure that administrative assistant is the right job code um, versus um, it feels like there's a technical piece to the work that she does that mm -hmm. we want to make sure is incorporated in this. And so I think that there's sort of like other towns in the past have had assistant health agents or other pieces. Uh, do you feel like the administrative oh, assistant okay. kind of gives right due what I this is what description I to the current yeah. clerk's role? Yes. Does that, that feels, you feel like absolutely, and you, and and you feel like it's officially the job description. To be yeah, inclusive. Yeah, right. So you sort of feel like it's efficiently brought to cover the technical aspects of what she's doing. Yeah, she's not really doing okay, technical. I know where the yeah. Is. I mean, and when you look at the other, nothing constructed on it you know, sorts of jobs that they're saying yeah. are technical, okay. it seems like, yeah, you know, there's a What's specific this? niche area yeah. that they're providing. Okay. So okay. okay. Sounds good. Then I yeah, got nothing. I no, she's you feel fraud. very comfortable Absolutely. with that as a description. Yes. Okay. It, it, she what should have been an administrative assistant Western. years ago. Okay. Mm. And she does do a lot. Mm -hmm. Wrote it all out. It's pages and pages. Of Perfect. Well, they, so, okay. So, um, all right. So, Rick, I think we can end our broadcast uh, portion because we're just doing uh, signing of Warren's payroll and, and minutes. Perfect. So thank you, everybody.